Good. What's up? Uh, not much. We just did our first uh, Your live first daily episode of TV Talk. Bright today. and early, right? Yeah, 8 a.m., 8 a.m. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool. Well, yeah. we'll definitely get into that. So, just so you know, yeah. in the audience, I'm going to ask you guys to kill the music if you don't mind. Uh -huh. We'll kill the music and uh, we'll do this whole deal. <laughs> okay, cool. So, <laughs> this uh, is a super, super chill interview okay. for a couple hours. Okay. I promise you it will get not too, it's going to get heavy. Okay, yeah. We're, the audience gets to ask a lot of questions. Okay. Um, I'll ask questions. I'll field them from the audience. Perfect. Don't feel the need to just talk to the chat. We'll okay. just have a conversation. Okay. If you guys have questions, make sure to add them to the Honesty Hour room in Discord. And then if you're a non-sub and you can't do that and there's a question you really want answered, one of our lovely <laughs> subscribers will take that message <laughs> and put it into Discord for us. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get to know you. We're going to let everybody Great. find out, you know... Perfect. Why in the fuck you like anime so much? <laughs> That'll be one thing. We'll figure that out by the end of the night. Yeah, I'm sure we will. And uh, we'll talk about your career, what brought you to LA, all that wonderful yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the audience can get a chance to know you. So guys, this oh. is Emma. Hi guys, how's it going? There's already like so many good questions going on here. I'm excited. I know, yeah. I've got, I've got this all prepped and ready. <laughs> we'll get we'll get this nice awesome. and uh, we'll get it nice and ready here. Um, we'll do like a reintroduction a little bit because okay. we put these out as a podcast as well. Perfect. So we'll kind of reintro it for the podcast okay. and all that good stuff. So guys, that's Great. how this is going to work. If you subscribe, I appreciate you. Yes, Hassan Y123 just subscribed to Twitch Prime. Thank you Yay. for that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Hassan. Really do appreciate it. So if you guys subscribe, I'll call it out and I'll be like, hey, thank you for that. Um, but we're not going to dance. We're not going to go crazy because we want to make this an interview first and foremost. Um, we don't want to like totally kill the flow there. And if you tip or you subscribe, I'll make sure we say thank you to every single person at the end of the show um, after we're done with the kind of podcast segment because we really, really do appreciate it. Um, but we want to make sure it still works as a podcast yeah. and it's not just us being like, what? Yeah. Yeah. We're just talking about things just willy nilly. <laughs> I know the people that used to watch were really sad when they're like, oh, you don't dance anymore. And it's like, well, part of the reason we changed it up is I can't, guys. My body is just <laughs> continuing to get more and more broken <laughs> and I can't do the dance stuff anymore. It just fucking kills me. Kills me. I've got a I've got a pinched nerve in my uh, left arm right here above my shoulder that's been that been there for about five days now. I can barely lift my left arm. Not dancing. Yeah. Not happening anymore. That was me two years ago. I've changed a lot in two years. My body is almost dead. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> two, dead. Two years of hard twitch labor. Uh yes. <laughs> yes. It's destroyed it's, you. It's destroying my body yeah, yeah. very quickly. Um. <laughs> all right. So. Um, do you have anything you want to say before we start this interview? Uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I really like, uh, because I interview people so often for my job, you know, I'll do red carpets or press mm -hmm. lines at Comic-Con and things like that, or, or have people in for long form interviews on some of the after shows that I do. So it's, I actually really enjoy getting interviewed myself because I feel like I just get to like, I get mm. to. Well, I'm not a professional interviewer. Okay, that's fine. So. I, most, you know, most of the time that I've been interviewed, I don't know that I would necessarily call those people professional interviewers, but... You what know. defines a professional interviewer? I don't, you know, I don't really know. It's just a conversation. Yeah, it is. It's just a conversation. I actually, um, I, last year, no, maybe it was two years ago. Are you about to get now. into your backstory? Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, a little bit. I'll hold off on I'll it. I'll hold off on it. I'll hold, hold off. off. Hold off. Well, it's not, we don't want to like spill the beans now and then be like, now the podcast starts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that was a great story you just told me about how you're actually, a, you know, an adopted child <laughs> from uh, this and this and this. Um, okay, so, uh, are you guys, yeah, 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 you know what, but, uh, Yeah, I like M. Jason O's oh, professional comment. equals <laughs> getting get paid. paid. Yeah. So you said, okay, so yeah. then, wait, I run this network. No, I don't yeah. make shit. We did my taxes the other day and realized that half of my income still went back into the company. Yeah. <laughs> like, Malika did Malika my taxes. Malika did your taxes. I see. Hey, I provided you with things. That was a <laughs> we. I even did some spreadsheet stuff. <clears throat> yeah. I made spreadsheets for my taxes this year. It worked out great. I think that um, there is a direct correlation between being really good at doing spreadsheets and being not so great at math. Because 
you can put the formulas into a spreadsheet to do the math for you. Okay, see, I'm also dyslexic, <laughs> so I look at spreadsheets okay. and I see different tabs with different numbers in them, gotcha. and my brain just goes, and it's done. I okay. can't do spreadsheets. All right. I'm better at just sketching things on a piece of paper. Sure, that, that and, also And I'm like, works. oh, yeah, 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 I get it. Okay, let's do this. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Honesty Hour on Hyper RPG. I am your host... Uh, that's it. Uh, I'm not even into. I don't. You don't even know my name. It's fine. Uh, and I'm here with Emma Fife. Welcome, Emma. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. So we're gonna be answering you guys' questions and talking and getting to know Emma. And this is honesty hour. We've been gone for a while. We haven't done this. I know. In like I, I knew this was going on. Two here months. And, three months. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. I knew that uh, my friend uh, Danny Fernandez had done an episode, yeah. and I was like, I, I'm down. She, I'm down. A lot to of go other people that work like, here have too. So yeah. you just let me know that she's the only person that works here that you consider your friend. No, that's not and true. I, that's I just, how I'm going to take that. I just that. specifically remember Danny. No, doing it's fine. That. <laughs> I'll, I'll send out a memo tonight, <laughs> just in case anyone thought that Emma might be your friend. Right. Um, <laughs> only Danny. Only is Danny. Friend. Only Danny. That's the only one. <laughs> so uh, l let's just start. Let's let's start at, at the beginning. How okay. old are you? <laughs> I am thirty-one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. I, you I didn't have to answer that. No, it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm very open about my age. Uh, I don't feel like I need to hide it. I feel like uh, with every year of my life, uh, I've only improved. So uh, really, yeah, That's... yeah. I don't. I don't ever look back and go like. Oh man, I wish that I could be 21 again. <laughs> Definitely don't wish I could be 21 again. I do. You do? Always. Really? I have a degenerative tendon disorder, so it's just like. Ah, okay. I, I, I think back to like when I could move 10 feet. Sure. And like be like, I just moved 10 feet. Yeah. And I didn't even think about it. See, I, I miss those days. I, I mostly feel it um, from the point of view of if I don't get enough sleep. Nowadays, like when I was, oh, yeah. when I was in college, oh. it's like, I, you know, I was always, I always had like an overload of course credits and granted some of that was because I was, you know, in a show or I was designing costumes for a show or directing a show. Uh, but I, again, it was like, I basically, uh, but then I would have rehearsals every night and, you know, dance classes all day long and things like that. So, and you know, I'd on the regular sleep, like, you know, five, six hours and I was cool. Four hours, no problem. Yeah, I was right up until about two months ago, still only getting four on average. I well, think I'm up to six now. Yeah. Well, no, before the charity drive for a good two weeks, it was two or three. Uh, two or just three getting hours. prepped. Yeah, getting prepped I believe for that. that. I believe um, that. But no, I think I'm up the last the last week, six, maybe. Yeah. That sounds pretty, pretty I'm, good. I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty yeah. good about it. Um, so yeah, sleep as you get older. <laughs> I mean, so my my. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, my birthday is next week, and I found that I didn't care about them ever mm -hmm. before 30. And then when okay. I hit 30, it was just like, oh, 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 I gotta do things. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make shit happen and get things done yeah, with my life. Yeah, I, I think I, I felt that a little bit. Like, I was very excited to turn 30. Like, I was very excited about my 30th birthday party. I had a birthday party at uh, the One Up. Have you ever been to that bar in Sherman Oaks? It's a arcade bar. I've heard, I've it's I've been to a lot of arcade so bars. So yeah. fun. Um, That's the, a lie. I've been to two. The one in Sherman Oaks is really chill. Uh, they have great food, great selection of beer on tap, and all of their arcade games are free. Uh, so there's that. Um, but yeah, so I had like a, I had a party there. It was so much fun. And then mm -hmm. like when I was turning. 31. The thing is, I still think of myself as 30. Like, I, I haven't really accepted I kind of did that purposely. That I, I did yeah. that purposely. I still, I, if you asked me what I was turning, um, Malika could tell you, but I honestly don't know what I'm turning next week. I don't, yeah. I stopped keeping track yeah, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I think it was, I don't know, I'd have to do math in my head and I don't want right, to, it. it's, <laughs> it. yeah. it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm I'm alive. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, when did you come out to LA? Were you born here? Like where where are you from? No, uh, I was born in Bethel, Connecticut, uh, which is the same town that P.T. Barnum grew up in, uh, and Meg Ryan went to my high school. 
Uh, at the same time as uh, you? Not at the same time as me. A little bit older, yeah. yeah. She's a little older than me. A little bit older. Uh, yeah. Uh, but when you were there, there was still like this, like, because she had just gone out and made yeah, it big. I mean, yeah, I mean. And you're yeah. like, whoa, you've got mail. Uh, whoa. You've got, <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, you know, she was the voice, uh, the speaking voice of uh, Anastasia in the movie Anastasia. So that was a really big deal for me because I loved that movie. Uh, no, but I, and I, yeah, I, and uh, my mom, when I was a kid, was like very adamant that I should watch the movie Sleepless in Seattle. Um, as I was first starting to sort of enjoy chick flicks, she was like, you have to watch Sleep. I just, I have this very vivid memory of her being, of her like being very insistent that I watch that film, uh, which of course is one of the uh, great uh, Meg Ryan, uh, Tom Hanks classics. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've still never seen it. Okay, well, to it's, this it's, day. you know what, it's a good one. It's really, it's a, it's a cute movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll see that, right, this saying, it's a cute movie, I'm like, meh. Okay, oh. all right, that's fair, that's fair. Dude, did you see American Gods yet, though? Yeah, oh my God, American Gods is so good. We watched that last night, and I was like, <gasps> whoa, that, wow. Oh, and those, wow. it's got the, the, like, Brian Fuller Hannibal blood splatters in it, and, and, but, like, the same, like, beautiful aesthetic that you come to expect from all of his shows like because he had such an interesting visual style in um pushing daisies which i love that's my favorite and there's a lot of that in this as well but like it it blends everything that was good about uh dead like me pushing daisies and hannibal like into one show pretty much yeah i, I, yeah. I think that's a really good way to put it it's yeah. kind of all together but yeah. Uh, back to back anyway, to questions Fuller and all that kind awesome. of stuff. Yeah, it's good. Go watch Pushing <laughs> Daisies. It's it's great. Yeah. Um. So when did you come out to LA? Like, how old were you? Like, what what moment were you kind of like, you know what? I'm gonna leave the East Coast. I'm gonna go to do this thing on the West yeah. Coast, which is a lot different. It's a big step. It, and you know, did you originally come out to be talent, or did I you come out to had write? A or? Really interesting journey. Actually oh, great, getting good, to LA. good, 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 good. Uh, so I grew up in Connecticut, uh, and then I went to college in Virginia in the Shenandoah Valley. I went to James Madison University. I don't know what that is, but uh, it sounds important. It's it's a beautiful area in Western Virginia. Okay, it's not West okay. Virginia, but it's in the Western part of Virginia. Okay. Um, and the, like there's the Blue Ridge Mountain Range. It's it's a really beautiful um, area of the country. And uh, yeah, so I, I went to um, James Madison University, JMU, uh, and we had a theater program there. I was in the theater program. I majored with musical theater. Um, that doesn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things are making sense right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I I, uh, uh, I I went to school for musical theater, but the nature of our program was, and it was very much kind of in flux when I was there, and I actually kind of credit the people who I was in school with that were like a year older than me and a year younger than me with kind of shaping the direction the program has ended up going, which is really great. Mm -hmm. um, from the point of view that there was this big focus on student productions. So we had the experience as students, like you could propose a show to do in the student theater. Like if you wanted to direct a show, you could write basically a pitch for it um, and literally ask for money to do a show. Uh, and so I did my sophomore year, uh, going into my junior year, I pitched a show for that this is a fall musical? semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a musical. Do you still have it? Uh, I don't know if I have a recording of Wild Party somewhere, but I, I mean the script. Oh, I, it's not one that I wrote. It was all it, we for the most part like it was existing properties. Um, okay, and gotcha. Like so, part of the proposal was like I need to pay to get the rights to do this show. Oh, gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha. But gotcha. Uh, but yeah, so I directed. Uh, so there's two versions of this musical, The Wild Party. They're based on the same narrative poem that was written in the 1920s. So it's about like prohibition and sort of vaudevillian performers having a grand old time drinking mm -hmm. bathtub gin at an apartment party. Uh, and of course, everything goes horribly, terribly wrong. People end up dying. It's, it's, it's tragic. Uh, but anyway, uh, so there were actually two musicals, as I said, uh, that were adapted from this. Uh, one was written by uh, John Michael Accusa, and the other was written by Andrew Lippa. Andrew Lippa's music is really catchy and fun, and his actually follows the narrative of the poem a little more closely. The Lacusa one's a lot more like heady and uh, uh, sort of like changes a lot of stuff, like has a lot more to say about like race relations. And um, I directed the Andrew Lippa one, <laughs> and my, my friend directed uh, the more complicated one. But basically, the guy who was filling in as our interim department head, my friend Katie, was adamant she wanted to do the Lacusa version. And uh, the guy who was the head of the department was basically like, oh, I think you guys should do both. And he like 
gave us this really inspiring speech because he he was an alumni of JMU about like how the student theater had been like the biggest thing in school back in his day and like you know 20 year old me was like so inspired I was like yes I'm gonna go write that proposal tonight uh, and I did and I got it passed uh, so yeah I directed a show when I was, uh, you know, 19 years old. So after directing that show, what you're yeah. saying is a bunch of agents showed up and were like, you yeah, need exactly. to come out to Hollywood. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> we're going to pick up your show. We're going to make you a star. Uh, yeah, no, not exactly. Uh, but yeah. it's what got the bug started. It is. I mean, so I, again, it was like I was a performer, but when I directed a show was when I kind of figured out that I really liked directing. Oh, um, well, usually that's the response people have when they're yeah. like, man, I was acting and then I got to direct and I was like, oh, I can tell other people, people what, what to, to do. do. Yeah, exactly. I like this. Yeah, this so, is my vision. Yeah, yeah. So I really liked directing. Um, mm. And then, and, and, you know, over the course of my uh, college career, I, uh, you know, worked on makeup crew for shows. I worked in the scene shop. I worked in the costume shop. I designed costumes for a main stage show. Uh, so like, I, I kind of did a lot of other things when I was in college so that by the time I graduated, and actually this is a really funny story. Um, so Ben Pasek and Justin Paul wrote some of the music for the musical La La Land. Okay. Back when they had just graduated from University of Michigan, they wrote uh, this sort of musical review, I, th I believe it is called Passages. Anyway, we did it my senior year. I actually costume designed it. And they came out to like see the show and hang out. I mean, they weren't that much older than us. And it was actually one of them, like the, some, they did like a Q&A and some freshman in the audience, and I was a senior, like I was like this close to graduating, uh, asked them that, you know, the freshman did, oh, you know, like, but you went to school for performing. Like, aren't you sad that that's not what you're pursuing anymore? And they were like, no, not really. <laughs> like, you're, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not sad. It's not a failure. It's just the goal has changed. I get asked a lot uh, because my master's is in painting. Right. And now that I'm doing production, I get asked a lot, like, don't you miss painting? Mm -hmm. Like, no, not really, because no. I'm still getting to be creative for a living, yeah. which and is the, it taps into the same energy. It does, it totally yeah. does. And, and so for me, it was like, I was very, uh, again, I was so close to graduating and I didn't know what I was going to mm -hmm. be doing next. So I was definitely having a little bit of a crisis. And like, I went out for drinks with them and they were like super cool. And they're like, we, girl, if you got another dream, it's like, it's totally fine. Like, don't, don't let other people perceiving you not wanting to necessarily be like on Broadway anymore to be a failure. It just mm -hmm. means that you want something else now. And, and if that's making you happy and you're still being creatively fulfilled, then that's a good, it's good thing. advice. It's good advice. Yeah. So what got you to make the jump to LA? Well, uh, right after I graduated from college, uh, I got hired by a touring children's theater company. Um, so I... Touring Children's Theater. Mm -hmm. Yep, I worked for a company uh, called Missoula Children's Theater. Uh, there's actually a documentary about uh, the company called The Little Red Truck, uh, if you guys want to get an idea of what they do. So basically, you, uh, we would travel around to uh, t towns all over the U.S. Uh, with everything you needed to do a play except the cast. So it was just you and one other person. I mean, there, you know, there were a bunch of different tour teams, and we all trained together and became friends, and that was fun. Uh, but yeah, so it was just you and your tour partner in your, you know, Ford F-150 uh, with your, you know, cloth walls collapsed and all the poles to make them stand up like bungee corded to the top of your uh, wow. uh, your, your uh, truck topper. Uh, yeah, and we would just go around and do a play in a week, every week, uh, because kids, if you tell them that you have to learn all of your lines in a 40-page script uh, by Wednesday that you received on Monday, they go, okay because they don't have the same sort of concept of that's not possible like adults do. Uh, so it was pretty magical. And, and parents are kind of like, why, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. yep. um, so when you, when you say to it, like, were you guys getting hotels and stuff, or were you just like straight up oh, like no, no, rock no. banding oh, no, and sleeping great. in a no, truck? No, it was amazing. Uh, the uh, Missoula treats our actors extremely well. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, it, you, in every town, sometimes you would like stay with families in town, uh, but the, the requirement is, is that each, uh, tour actor needed to have their own separate room. It's like mm -hmm. you guys would otherwise be spending literally every second of your day together. Wow, um, that's that's that adds up quick. Yeah, that to pay for a separate room for every performer. Yeah, 
Shit. Yep. Uh, we so put like eight people on a floor at Comic Con. Right. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so yeah, everybody had to have their own separate rooms. Um, and again, it's like a lot of the time, even if we stayed in hotels, the rooms were donated. But also, a lot of the time, you stayed. Small towns, or yeah, I was okay. in a lot okay. of really small towns. Re- like really, really small. Uh, I went to a town called like Ridgefield, Idaho. I want to say, and I think the population was ooh, maybe nine hundred. <laughs> It's pretty uh, good. Yeah. It's bigger than my hometown. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, and for me, so again, I grew up in what I had perceived to be a small town. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bethlehem, Connecticut has a population of about 18,000, um, which is still relatively small when you look at like the populations of big cities. And oh, also, yeah. I grew up an hour outside of New York. So, you know, my, my perception of town versus city was very, very warped. Yeah. Um, and uh, the so closest city to me was about 18,000. We called it a city and it was two and a half hours away. Jeez. Yeah. And we thought it was huge. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I remember uh, going to some like tiny towns in Canada and like I worked on some uh, reservations and stuff as well, which was oh, cool, really cool. interesting. Um, but yeah, we had to drive like 40 minutes <laughs> to go to the grocery store. <laughs> Because uh, they didn't have any in town. Uh, I once worked in a little town in Wisconsin, though, uh, that did not have a grocery store, but had nine bars. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some of those places <laughs> up in the Northeast are kind of food deserts, and you can't find like yeah. grocery stores and stuff. Just yep. Poverty. Yep. Uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, so that going on tour literally changed my entire perspective on how people live. Um, because I, I didn't realize how sort of narrow my view was until I was out there like seeing how people really live their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I was out on the road, cause I mean, you know, growing up, I always thought like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go to New York and do the whole theater thing. Um, but when I was on the road, I kind of was like, well, there's a lot more to the country than the Northeast. Like I'd gotten it in my head that like I was going to go to school in Virginia and then I was going to move to New York and just like bartend and audition. Um, Gotcha. Gotcha. You're going to do the New York thing. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, when I was on the road, I kind of eventually got to a point where I was like, I don't really want to do that. Cause if I go to New York after I'm done touring, you'll go to LA and well, no, no, Serve no, 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 and this, no, no, no. This, is, this is my reasoning. Okay. Because all of my friends that live the New York kind of life, when they book a gig, it's not in New York. You almost always are auditioning at, you know, when you're first starting out, you're auditioning for regional theater and touring jobs. Yeah. So they're all just in New York for a short period of time trying to get out of New York. And I'd already lived on the road for two and a half years. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, also, I drove over Snoqualmie Pass uh, in Washington State in a blizzard with chains on the tire of my truck. And I mm-hmm. was like, I never need to see snow again. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another girl who um, was uh, on tour at the time, she was not my tour partner, but uh, her, uh, she and her tour partner and myself and my tour partner were both kind of circling each other in New Mexico for several weeks. So we were like usually only about an hour apart. Uh, and so we hung out quite a lot. And... I mentioned I sort of wanted to move to L.A. She's like, I sort of want to move to L.A. Uh, Were you worried at all about the kind of lack of... I mean, L.A. LA is definitely a film city. It's not really a a theater performance city. But again, it's like at that point, and I I literally moved out here being like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out some, like, production job in television or something. I don't know. Yeah. I I didn't really... And how old were you when you came out? Twenty... Two, that's pretty that's pretty young yeah to hit LA yeah 23 I think mm. yeah so how long did it take you once you came out here to start like figuring out what you wanted to do out here oh my gosh uh, you know I, I don't know if it was like this for you but it was pretty overwhelming for me because you hear about it right but now it's a little bit easier but when we were younger there was the internet didn't really expose a lot of yes. the industry yet Yes. So it was just like, there's this, this, this veil mm-hmm. over it and you show up and you're just like, now how do I work here? Yeah, exactly. No, it's so it's true. Like, oh, you got to put in this many hours to join a union to do this and this yeah. and that. 
well, how do I do that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, no, I, I totally agree. You with know, that. and you're just in, especially if you didn't go to school. You know, like I'm always really envious of people like Malika who went to USC. Right, right. And they're just basically like, "Yo, you're in the group. You're <laughs> yeah. in the club now." It's and when so I first true. came out here, I was working gigs. They were, they were like, "I went to Chapman or I went to USC," mm -hmm. and that was mm -hmm. it. And I was just like, "What the fuck? I missed that. I missed that memo yeah, that that's I, how you get uh, in." I, well, but it's so funny too because when I was like looking at schools, my dad was like, "You should look at some California schools," and I was like, mm, "I don't know." And now yeah. I'm like, eh, "Maybe I should have." Uh, but I loved my college experience. Uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah, when I first moved out here, again, it was like, I even came out here not being 100% sure what I wanted to do. Uh, and uh, I, uh, again, ended up working in children's theater. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, connect with this really wonderful uh, children's theater program uh, that is unfortunately in Malibu. Uh, so that was a bit of a commute. Uh, mm -hmm. But all the like people that were running the company didn't live in Malibu either. It was like we were all commuting out to Malibu because that's where the students were and that's where the Did you ever was. do clown schooling? No. You have that kind of... No, nope, With the did. children's theater? Yeah, and I, I think it just comes from years of doing children's theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because in the Missoula shows, it was like uh, you and your tour partner, all of the plays had one adult part in them, uh, and you and your tour partner would switch off who was in the show and who was sort of the primary director of the show each week. Um, so I, I played a lot of uh, wacky characters. Like um, I was a starfish uh, in The Little Mermaid for a little while. Cool. So um, you've almost been out here for ten years. I yeah yeah I've been here uh, it'll, yeah it's, uh, seven or eight years in October. Yeah. It's well, if you came out at twenty two and you're yeah. almost thirty two. Uh, no, I'm I'm thirty. I just turned thirty one. Oh, you just did. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. just hit that threshold. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So. Yeah. Um, we're starting to, you know, get up to speed right. here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start fielding some questions okay, from the audience, sure. which I know will circle back around Absolutely. to some other stuff Absolutely. about personality traits, things yeah. like that. And what what brought you to be Emma? Because <laughs> I doubt you were born Emma. Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Are you a nature versus nurture? Uh, well, a little nature versus nurture. I think for me, uh, the, the moment that I started to become the Emma that I am today, uh, was when I was <laughs> three uh, years old and I went to see, this would have been November of 1989, I went and saw the movie The Little Mermaid uh, and that was what sort of really hooked me on kind of the performance aspect of things. I went through a period of my life where I didn't want to be an actor, I didn't want to be in the public eye. And it wasn't that I didn't enjoy performing, I did, but I was um, scared to death of the paparazzi. Like once I became aware of what the paparazzi was, okay. I was like terrified. Uh, and so that was why I started to gravitate towards theater. Cause I was like, well, if I'm in theater, I'm only gonna be famous with a select group of people. <laughs> and I won't have problems with the paparazzi. Very strange. I know, I know. It's very, <laughs> very, very, you're big of yourself. Yeah, I don't, I don't know <laughs> Look, why. I just, I don't want to be famous because the paparazzi, who wants to deal with the paparazzi? <laughs> I mean, I'm really obviously going to be followed and chased and my <laughs> life will be ruined. So I'll choose, I'll choose to get yeah. into musical theater instead because uh, nobody, paparazzi don't follow around. <laughs> that that was fine. legitimately my thinking. Totally fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then that was uh, the, the sort of, theatrical side of me was further solidified uh, when I uh, first discovered Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals. Uh, I was seven, I think, uh, when I first heard the soundtrack to Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Uh, and then my parents took me to see it on Broadway that December. Uh, and then I just started like going to theater shows my whole life thereafter. So that's kind of where it started to be crafted. Uh, and I think it was further developed when I was in college as well, because one of the things that I kind of started to realize as, you know, I was in school with all of these like theater people, mm -hmm. um, was that, uh, you know, I was much more comfortable being myself than a lot of my actor friends were. Um, and then again, in like in LA that also really struck because you know when I first moved out it here, is was, it is a very interesting like I, I love I was around a lot of 
theater people yeah. in college. I was in the, I ran the art ship and we also had a theater ship there and most of my friends, I did independent film and the mm -hmm. only people who were gonna act were the theater kids. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I did some Samuel Beckett stuff after college, but the, uh, it is an interesting psychological kind of mm -hmm. trip to go down is talking to people who get into theater, who have some identity issues yeah. and, and some, it's an interesting thing to find people who are so extroverted but yet so unconfident in their own who they are. Yes, exactly. Um, and, and, it, and it is interesting, especially when you still find it with people who are extremely successful. Mm -hmm. Some of the people I know who are the, and I'm not going to say their names, but some of the people I know who are the most unsure of themselves are the biggest actors mm -hmm. who would just always be kind of like, yo, um, I don't know how I did there. Like, are you, how do you feel? Are you okay? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, do you think I'm good? I'm, do you think I'm doing a good job? Yeah. You know, what do you need from me? I'm like, man, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and it's always interesting to see how that continues on. And I, yeah. You know, like, what drives you to get up in front of people and look for, you know, that right. to, to perform? Yeah. Well, and I, and it was one of those things where, you know, when I, again, when I first moved to LA and I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I took some casting director workshops and acting classes and things like that. And I, I basically like found myself encountering so many people. And this continued once I um, started working at Universal as a tour guide, encountered so many people that like all they want to do is act. Like that's it. Mm -hmm. And I sort of acknowledged about myself very early on. I was like, I, you know, I like acting. I'll, I, if, somebody asks me to be in a project, I will always say yes, um, you know, if I have the time to do it, but I don't think that's what my career is gonna be because there are so many other things I like doing. Um, you, you're a hustler. Yeah, yeah. Everyone here is a hustler. Yeah, it's true. Every <laughs> single person who walks through these doors at this studio is a hustler. Yeah. No one's doing just the one thing. No, not at all. We not can't. at all. None of it. We can't. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. So, 4 a.m. Critter wants to know, what's your favorite book and what is your favorite graphic novel of all time? Hmm. Well, uh, because it's... I, I, favorite book is hard for me to choose just one. I've read a lot of books in my life. Um, but just because there's the fantastic Hulu series That was a it, humble brag. Right now, it was. It was. I've very well read you guys. Uh, if any of you I've uh, read a lot of books. <laughs> watch TV talk, you know that because I bring up books pretty regularly. Uh, but uh, because it's so fresh in my mind right now, uh, one of my favorite books is definitely Handmaid's Tale. Uh, it's a really brilliant piece of dystopian fiction. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where and I was, and again, like the thing that I feel the Hulu series has done incredibly well was I remember when I first read the book, I like mm -hmm. could not stop thinking about it. And I remember like writing this whole essay on it uh, in high school when I read it about like, you know, the, how it, the women in it being terrible to each other was like just part of the society they lived in that was run by these like, you know, white male fundamentalist Christians. And, uh, and, and that was the thing was like watching the show, I was like, I this is this is invoking the exact same feeling I had the first time I read the book. Cool. Um, and then as far I got to see, it, yeah, we canceled. We're trying to cut down on costs like for <laughs> ourselves too, not just the studio. Yeah, I was yeah. like, all right, who's, who's out? Go? Who's, who's got to go? go? And then right after I canceled it, Malika's like. Let's watch the handmaid's. I'm like, oh, well, it's, shit, dude, it's so. I just good. canceled Hulu. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I I'm blown away by it. It's at a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, it's so wow. so good. Uh, and the book is amazing too. And the, all the all the changes that they've made uh, to the series are fantastic because it just is bringing it more to reflect the modern era so that you get the feeling that like, this is not that far in the future. Mm -hmm. um, you get to see, you know, the book was published in 1985. So in the book, they are supposed to estimate that the year this all went down was around like 2005, which would have then been in the past. Right. So they had to update some stuff, but it's ugh, it just makes it even more eerie. So uh, what's your favorite graphic uh, novel? Graphic and you can novel, say manga if you I was want. gonna say, cause I, you know, I, I read a lot of um, manga. Uh, so, um, hmm, there's so many that I really like. Uh, <laughs> one that I really wanted to recommend, because I did an episode of Wednesday Club over at Geek and Sundry where we were mm -hmm. talking about manga, uh, and one that I really wanted to recommend, but like, I, I can't, 
I cannot recommend this manga to you because it is incomplete and it will never be complete. Really? Uh, yeah. So uh, do, this Dojinshi Circle, or uh, they started out as a Dojinshi Circle. So Dojinshi is like the independent press in Japan. Um, so they like published stuff on their own for a while before they were like serialized in like Nakayoshi um, and uh, uh, all the sort of girl magazines because they write stuff for girls. Uh, it's this uh, group of manga cog, manga creators uh, called Clamp. So they wrote like Cardcaptor Sakura and Magic Knight Ray Earth and Chobits and Clover um, and XXX. I really Comic. like Clover. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Uh, so they wrote this manga that has been adapted into a really terrible but pretty anime film and a very lackluster 26 episode series. Uh, the manga is called X. It is about the end of the world. Uh, and none of the adaptations do the manga justice. Uh, it's really, it's really great. It's about like basically the main character, Kamui, like he is, he basically has to make a decision about whether he wants to side with the seven seals and protect the earth or the seven angels and destroy the earth and start over again. And he chooses the seven seals and then his best friend is like mm -hmm. his shadow counterpart. So he becomes the evil version of him. Eve, I mean, he's evil, but the seven angels unto themselves, it's questionable whether or not they're evil because it's like, well, you know, maybe it is a good idea to destroy the earth and start again. So it's it's a it's a really good series. Uh, yeah, it sounds like something I'd enjoy checking yeah, out. I might yeah. have to check that out. Oh, yeah, it's a little um, supernatural. So Supla wants to know mm -hmm. what's been the biggest surprise playing an RPG live. Because hmm. had you done any RPGs on Twitch? I had not done any RPGs on Twitch. Uh, I think for me, it's just. Being in that live setting for me has just like raised the stakes of like really wanting to stay in character and also like being extra interested in the backstories of the other people that I'm playing with. You know what I mean? Because when you're doing something and you're aware that there is an audience, like I'm- You I'm, have to be more attentive. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm mm -hmm. very aware of the fact that like we are trying to create an interesting television show essentially. Um, so I think you put a lot more attention to detail into your performance and into kind of like figuring out your character's story and like what makes them tick and who they are. And What's your favorite aspect of doing it on Twitch, not just as a performer, but as like live interactions concerned? Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> just the, the first time we ever played and people were like donating money to like help us. That's the other thing that, that I really, really love about the way that we do pencils and parsecs is that your donations, you know, they directly affect the game because you can donate dice to us. And that just helps the gameplay move along in, in such a great way. Cause it's like, you know, I have to do some mm. very challenging feat that maybe I'm not terribly skilled at, but like the audience has been so generous that like we managed to pull stuff off. Which I know some people who are like game purists get frustrated with that kind of aspect, and uh, and I think I feel for like I would really miss that not playing a game on Twitch now. Um, <laughs> per for performance sake, yeah. it adds so much because yeah. you get to you get to be creative with your storytelling yeah, abilities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but sometimes not having it also gives you mm -hmm. creative situations because oh, you have yeah. to react to not having it. So no, totally. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting in that way. Um, so Cupcake Therapy wants to know, mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a big jump in another direction. Okay. So who or what have been your biggest inspirations in life? Oh, wow. What, 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 what gets you going? Like what, what keeps you inspired or in the past? Cause I don't, I, I, I find it interesting cause sometimes I feel like we make shit up when this question comes up yeah. because when you're in hustle mode, you don't, you don't think about it necessarily. Yeah, I, yeah. But I feel like when we're younger, we're, we're taught to look for those things mm -hmm. at a younger age. So I don't know. Did you have any inspirations? You no, know, uh, I have, I have one story. I don't know that it's so much an inspiration, but it definitely inspired me to maybe potentially go down the career path that I've kind of gone down. Um, so when I was a kid, uh, I loved the uh, British TV series called Changing Rooms, off of which the TLC American series Trading Spaces was ripped. Okay. Uh, so, t so Trading Spaces is an American version of Changing Rooms. And 
while I didn't like Paige Davis as a host as much as I liked Carol Smiley. I don't even know what this show's about. Uh, It's about basically uh, two like neighbors or friends or whatever, they uh, switch houses and redo a room in one another's house. Like with the help of a designer and a carpenter, they have a whole team. Um, over Wait, the this, course this, of two days. This inspires you? Be, no, no, no. And this, but I'm, I haven't gotten to the point. Because okay, I'm really show. curious okay. now. So It's like, I think I've heard of this. Are we thinking of the right thing? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but Paige Davis, who was the host of Trading Spaces, her background was in musical theater. So for me, at this point in my life, I knew musical theater was what I was going to, I wanted to pursue in college. Mm-hmm. But I was like, well, if musical theater doesn't work out, I could, I could go down the hosting path. I think I'd really like that. And I think that was the first time I ever really thought about being a host as a career option. Gotcha. Yeah. So you, you actually consider hosting mm-hmm. a career option. Yeah. I feel like... Out of all the people who work here, you and Hector are the two that it's like hosting. Yeah. As a career. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Yeah. Because it's not, so, it, it's a very new form of career path as an entertainer. It is. I mean, it's been around, but not to the extent that it is now. Yeah. That, because of that's internet content true. is allowing it to just yeah. blow up. And most people who get into it are still primarily want to be actors or writers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and there's a small group. They're like, no, I, I want to be a host. Yeah. And I, and I mean, that, that's definitely what I want to do. And it's a weird thing. But again, it, it, it circles back to me being like, I don't know. I like myself. Like, I've been pretty comfortable with myself and my own personality and so I think that it's something that I'm well suited for because I enjoy just like talking about the things that I'm passionate about uh I mean as you say it's like it has become a much bigger sort of spectrum uh now than it was because it was like back in the day there were like yeah some game show hosts and like MTV VJs uh and then a few sort of like home improvement show Mm -hmm. hosts, uh, but it certainly was never at the place that it is now. Yeah. 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 I think, um, and that's, that's part of the reason, one of the reasons we like having you here is we like having people who are just very passionate about the things they're passionate about. Yeah. Saying you like something to just be agreeable doesn't really fly with us. We'd prefer somebody who's just (laughs) like, I fucking love this thing. This is great. And even if I'm like, oh, I hate that stuff, I'll be like, I respect that you love it, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, a lot of you guys love musicals, and I think they're a disaster. <laughs> but I respect I that you love it. I've worked with regular that hate musicals. <laughs> I just can't. My, my exposition needs to be <clears throat> subtle. Were you not exposed to musicals as a kid? Fuck no. Okay. No. Right. I, I grew up watching RoboCop and... Schwarzenegger movies and uh, like 70s cop dramas, not, <laughs> not gotcha. Disney movies. All right, all right. <laughs> did not did not see Disney movies as a kid, really. I remember seeing Lion King the first time being like, oh, this is, uh, people like this, this is good, this is good. I, I just want to watch RoboCop again. <laughs> like, RoboCop was way cooler. That guy's torso is all that's left. Oh, that dude's doing blow off a hooker's boobs. Wait, why do I know what that is? I'm only five. <laughs> Um, so no, musicals I just didn't, I never connected to and I watched a lot of 70s cinema and so it made me even as a child pretentious without knowing what pretentious was, sure. okay. but musical people can also be super pretentious about no, their they, musical no, they, taste. They, they, no, they so it's, absolutely can. So when I first started like seeing that and hanging out with theater kids and they show music and stuff, I'm just like, Where's the subtext? <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just like, ah, here's everything, and we're going to sing it. And then just in case you missed anything, we're going to repeat it over and over again yeah. till the theme is slammed in your face for <laughs> fucking ever. And I'm here, and you can see me. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's like, whatever. Um, <laughs> not for me. Not for me. Okay. I've enjoyed a couple, like okay. uh, Hedvig and the Angry Itch. I okay, really enjoy. That's a good one, yeah. uh, really enjoy that Are one. Are you gonna go see Hamilton? Do you have tickets to see Hamilton? No, I'm not gonna okay. see Hamilton. Well, I have tickets. I'm very excited. I know people are freaking out about that one. I mean, the only one I probably would have seen that's recent would have been uh, Book of Mormon, mm-hmm. but I don't want to pay for it. I don't want to spend. I don't want to spend that much money to just be kind of like, this is funny. Oh. Yeah. I won the lottery for Book of Mormon the last oh, time cool. I was in LA, so I got tickets for like 25 bucks and was front and center. 
Yeah. I lucked out. I lucked out. Don't get me wrong. It was amazing. And actually, I didn't win. My friend who I was with won. But we both, you know, you get a, one, you get two tickets if you win the lottery. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I typically, but we want to support anyone here who is really passionate yeah, about what they're absolutely. passionate about and, and wears that on their sleeve. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's exciting to watch, and especially in this live format. Yeah. Like, I think one of the most interesting things to me about Twitch is that you can't really fake it. No. Um, because they'll see through it eventually. Mm-hmm. Eventually, people are just going to start being like, wait, I don't, I don't buy that shit. Like, yeah. Um, because you're spending so much time with someone on Twitch mm-hmm. that it just, your, your real passions are going to shine through for sure. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, so Krillin wants to know if you could please list five ways you were like, I, I know Minako. I She's, know that's, Minako. That's Sailor Venus in Sailor Moon. Oh, see, I wouldn't know that either. <laughs> and Malika's going to be mad at me for not knowing that, but oh, I don't. Five ways that I am like her. Well, uh, I think I am sort of the anime big sister archetype. If I had to put myself in an archetype category, uh, which she uh, certainly falls into. Uh, we both uh, have, uh, well, she has a cat. I have two cats. Well, her cat is also technically... Well, you're taking this very seriously. Like, like an alien, uh, uh, technically. Uh, and then what else? Um, uh, we are both uh, natural-born leader types. Uh, she is the leader of uh, the Inner Senshi, so the, uh, the sailor guardians of all the planets uh, that are closest to the Earth. Um, and uh, we both are more focused on uh, our career and in her case it's like her cosmic duty in my case it's my career uh than we are on relationships i don't know if that was five or it might have been more yeah or maybe more so we should just say you are a huge sailor moon fan i love sailor moon yeah and i know i'm laughing but it's only because i would respond in very similar ways if someone was like how are all the ways you're like peter parker i'd be like well let me tell you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, funny you yeah. ask. I, it's not like I've ever thought about yeah, this. Totally. Uh, no, I don't just have a list ready of. No, definitely right. not. Um, <laughs> it's it's interesting as nerds mm. that we spend a lot of our lives modeling our our inspirations, personas, what have you, off of fictional characters. Yeah, that's very true. When did you get into Sailor Moon? How young? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, when I was, okay, so it started airing on TV in North America in 1995, so I was nine. Uh, and the way I discovered it actually was I, I remember seeing ads for the toys uh, and I like would look at the dolls every time I went into like KB Toys in the mall. I would just like, you know, when we were looking around the toy store, I kept thinking I wanted to buy these toys, but I'd never actually seen the show. Uh, and then I, uh, you know, um, grew up in Connecticut. Uh, so like you do, I went to horse camp uh, when I was a kid. I, I rode horses for years. Uh, I was an equestrian from age five to about 16. Um, so there's a lot of ways we're similar, but just have different mm-hmm. viewpoints on how those things mm-hmm. work. Yep. I rode horses a lot when I, and I really dislike horses. Oh, yep. yeah. Nope, I love horses. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a girl who I was at horse camp with was watching it. And she was like, tell me you're watching Sailor Moon. And I was like, obviously, because I, as a little kid, like, could not admit that I hadn't seen something that I felt okay. like I should have seen or read. Uh, okay. So I was... That nerd pressure. Yeah, it's that nerd pressure. I still feel it to this day. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I lo- I'm, yeah, I love that uh, yeah, episode. I totally of love that thing That I show that came out 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I, I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. So, of mm-hmm. course, then, like, the next day, I was like, i got to watch Sailor Moon. Uh, and at the time, it aired, like, super early in the morning on one of the UPN networks. Um, So, I mean, the good uh, thing was, is, you know, I was going to camp really early in the morning anyway, so it was easy to get caught up. And I I vividly remember the very first episode I ever saw uh, was in the Sailor Moon R season. So it's actually in the second season of Sailor Moon. Um, And it was the episode where uh, Sailor Jupiter uh, or uh, Makoto or as she would have been at the time in the Deked Up because they changed the names. Uh, her name was Lita originally. Uh, well, not originally, but originally in North America, I guess. Uh, and she had decided that she was in love 
with Al or Alan was his um, deked up name. Uh, he's an evil <laughs> alien uh, uh, pro antagonist. I know this is like all just going over your head. It's going over uh, my head, but it's fine. It's completely yeah. fine because uh, I would do the same thing with Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so she like decides that she's gonna make him lunch. Like I remember, for some reason, I remember that's the very first episode of. Uh, Sailor Moon that I ever I saw. remember the very first Spider-Man comic yeah. I ever read. And, it, yeah. and it's it was around the same age, too, yeah. where I discovered that. And I was just like, oh, shit. My life is different from here on yeah, out. Yeah, totally. just like, no, I got that's... it while I was reading. It was like, where has this been all my life? Yeah, that's how totally dare people how keep this from me? How dare this exist and I not be aware of and, it? Uh, and, yeah, so I, I at that from that moment on, it was like I just watched whatever Sailor Moon I could get my hands on. And then... Uh, you know, it was off the air for a couple of years, and then in uh, 99, it became part of the Toonami block on Cartoon Network. And That's true. I remember that, and I remember never watching it, but and, I remember being there. Uh, and, I, and, you know, I remember watching uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, and they, I think, I want to say that they started with episode one of both Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z at the point that I... Mm -hmm you know, clued into it, uh, like, on the same night. And it was, because I, I uh, had a little bit of insomnia as a kid. I still get it a little bit now. Uh, but I remember I had a TV in my room, and so I was watching TV, and I saw caught, like, the tail end of Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, oh, this seems, this is cool. I remember seeing, like, ads for the movie that they were showing on Sci-Fi Channel that one time. Um, and then Sailor Moon was on, and I remember watching the first episode and being like, I just, I just want to watch it again. And at that time, I would have been, like, 13. So, you know, the girls are only supposed to be, like, 14, 15 years old. So, like, I was really connected to it at that point. Um, and then uh, the episodes of the anime, uh, like, so my parents are both computer programmers. Um, so we were very early adopters of the internet. Uh, gotcha. So I went the complete opposite route. Okay, all right. Grew up in the middle of fucking nowhere. Mm -hmm. My mom was a teacher, so I did get to like sometimes stay late at school. Mm -hmm. Now my uncles both worked for Hewlett Packard, so we did have some of the like first computers, and I learned a lot about computers. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get internet until I was like far into high school. Oh wow! Um, and it was not, yeah, it, okay. it, it wasn't until college mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, I'm gonna dive into this shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very, very like missed a lot of the young internet. Trends okay. and stuff like that. Well, I definitely didn't. Yeah. Uh, so, because like the anime episodes weren't airing fast enough for me, I took to the internet. Uh, not to not to like find more episodes. That thought wouldn't have even occurred to me at this point in my life. It wasn't like you could just go on the internet and find TV shows. That's not. That wasn't a thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, this was even really before like BitTorrent. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you so, got Kazaa a little bit a little in there bit, in Napster, a bit, but yeah, they yeah, still, yeah. when they first came out, it was um, just music. You couldn't so, do the data of full TV oh shows. Oh my god, oh. no. No, we had dial-up internet. Uh, we had a second phone line so that we could be on the internet. Oh god. Um, <laughs> one of my, <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me when we first hooked it up when I was like a senior in high school, we first got internet, mm -hmm. my middle brother, one of my favorite memories, of because we used to make fun of him, uh, because he's like really book smart, but he would do stuff where it was just kind of like, duh. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we just hooked up our second phone line, and he called his best friend and was like, uh, can you call this number? We're trying to see if our new phone line works for the internet. And then he hung up, and then that phone rang, and he picked it up, and he was like, did it work? <laughs> and it's like, you, you just, you you just, just picked it up. <laughs> and it's like one of those moments like as a kid where it was like, a great family memory mm -hmm. where every single person in the family was laughing together, except yeah. for him. He didn't, right, right. He he didn't, didn't think it was it. funny. Yeah. Uh, but it was just like one of those moments I think back to. It was like, oh, we all, we were all together in that moment. Yeah. We all had a moment together. That's great. Felt good. Uh, yeah. I love good that. Good memory. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I took to the internet just to get whatever else about Sailor Moon I could get. So were you joining like forums, message I, boards, I was all mostly stuff? reading fan fiction, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, and just, like, going on people's So mostly fan fiction. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> well, okay, Interesting. so really early on in my, like, in my uh, Sailor Moon internet uh, binge, 
I uh, discovered this piece of artwork uh, mm -hmm. that's in the Sailor Moon manga okay. of all of the inner guardians. Um, well, the word is guardians now. That's what Viz would like you to use. Uh, back in the Deke days, it was Sailor Scouts. Uh, but anyway, I saw this artwork. Uh, it's a splash page, I think, on chapter 12 of the manga. Um, of all the, the inner senshi, like in the arms of the four guys who were kind of the, the main underling bad guys that season or that story arc in the manga. Uh, and, you know, I, I, uh, I like Jane Austen uh, novels quite a lot. So I like a, I like a good quadruple wedding uh, okay. <laughs> at the end of my stories. Uh, and I get a lot of flack for this. People, uh, there are many people that do not like uh, the... Senshi Shitano uh, ship uh, because it's too heteronormative for Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon does have good representation and stuff in it. But sorry, not sorry, I really like it. Uh, I was, you know, I was 13 years old. Uh, the, you know, the idea of representation in fiction at that point didn't exist. I mean, when Sailor Moon was first airing on Toonami, once they got around to finally actually dubbing Sailor Moon S, they made Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune cousins. Yeah. And they're lesbians. Like, it was terrible. Um, and, and so then on top of that, like, because I found that, I was like, I want to read fan fiction about this. Because this was an idea that was never really explored. It was just Napa Takeuchi, gotcha. who was the creator of Sailor Moon, was like, I don't know. I thought this How might old be were you when fun. you dove into this fan fiction kind of world? Uh, 13, 14. 13, 14? Yeah, yeah. How much of it broadened your horizons <laughs> of sexuality? <laughs> because uh, fan, just it, the second you say <laughs> Sailor Moon, fan fiction, <laughs> early days of the internet. Well, and, and it was through this. So this is uh, not canonical because uh, if you read the Sailor Moon manga, you know that the Outer Guardians uh, were not... They like, so Sailor Moon, everybody's the reincarnation of magical space princesses from like ancient days where there was this kingdom on the moon. Uh, and the Outer Guardians, while they lived during that time period, mm. they didn't like live in happiness with everybody on the moon. They like guarded the like outskirts of, I guess, the Milky Way galaxy. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, in, uh, uh, in um, the, fan fiction that I was reading, a lot of them did include the Outer Guardian. So as I said, like, it's not really canon, but it was fine for fan fiction. And that was when I even discovered the existence of more, like, cause, cause basically Sailor Moon initially in um, America and Canada, so well, North America, mm -hmm. uh, aired up to, they finally got to the end of the Sailor Moon R story arc, so the Black Moon clan, uh, and at that point, the only sort of additional major character that's in, been introduced is Chibiusa, who is Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask's daughter from the future. Uh, and you meet Sailor Pluto during this time period Wait, as well. Wait, so Tuxedo Mask is from Sailor Moon? Yeah. Wait, you didn't know Tuxedo Mask was from Sailor Moon? No, not a clue. Okay. Well, I recognize yeah. that. I thought, it, well, when we were playing Persona 5 the other day, people kept saying Tuxedo Mask while we were playing Persona 5. And I was like, uh, oh, does it come from the Persona series? No. Sailor nope. Moon, okay. I'm trying to think if Robbie, I think Robbie's a voice in Persona. I feel like everybody I know is a voice in Persona. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Uh, Malika says, dude, we were watching it the other night. No, we watched, <laughs> we watched Super Sentai the other night. We didn't watch Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh, Tuxedo Common. Yeah, Tuxedo Common. We did watch it the other night? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't pay attention to whatever <laughs> the hell you're talking about. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, no, oh, you're good. watching Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. When the, the fuck did we watch Sailor Pretty Guardian? Oh, you guys maybe watched it. When the fuck did we? <laughs> I blacked that out. I know we were watching Super Sentai the other night. Uh, Cameron let us borrow the Super Sentai oh. like uh, original, um, what was before Power Rangers. Right, right, yeah. Um, was it the one that uh, Mighty Morphin was uh, cut based from? Fr yeah, that cut from? It's good. Yeah, also... There's, uh, like, so, subtext so the guy, and, like, world building. So the guy in that who is uh, the Red Ranger, um, he played... He was uh, one of the first actors to play Mamoru slash Tuxedo Mask in the Sailor Moon musicals. There's a lot of Sailor Moon musicals. Anyway, uh, we could just say Zach blocks out our shared. <laughs> oh, that's so mean. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know. Yeah. 
you know. I, I know. know. I remember she put something on the other day, and I fell asleep really quick. It was probably what she's talking about. Yeah. Uh, but Zoo Ranger, I've been really enjoying. Okay, great. It's good. Yeah. I was really surprised because I was too old for Power Rangers when it sure, first came sure. out. Malika loves it. It's one of mm-hmm. her favorite things, and I was kind of like a little too old for it. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, if I had seen Zoo Ranger, right, as a kid, I would have fucking loved it. Yeah. Because it was more my type. Okay. Of stuff like there was actual world building. It yeah. wasn't just here's high school oh, kids well, that's, that's doing thing. high school uh, drama and, well, and, and this blah blah. Like I love anime and sure. which is something they don't hear that often. But I've watched a ton of anime. Well, I just that, don't talk about it. But well, I've seen a shit ton. That I think uh, is a lot of uh, tokusatsu, like uh, Super Sentai and uh, mm-hmm. Common Rider and the live action Sailor Moon. Tokusatsu is basically a, a sort of Japanese drama where it's like a where the bad guys are people in costumes is okay. basically um, the the sort of very base level of it, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, is that they are a lot more sophisticated than you know we think of Power Rangers as necessarily being. I mean, for me, far and away, my favorite version of Sailor Moon is the live action version, Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, because they do because there's so much like really subtle uh, character development in it and uh, you know people have different points of view on like what's the best way to handle the crisis at hand and uh, well, one of my favorite things about Zoo Ranger that made a huge difference is like oh I get to see people in the city running away mm-hmm. yeah now I care uh-huh Oh yeah! Now and, there's oh stakes. my gosh! In in Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, there's like all these scenes of like people being like passed out in the streets yeah. and like running away. It's great. It's a really really good series. Yeah. I feel like we should get to another question. Okay. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'll just talk about. No, this Sailor is great. Moon I know it's it's fun. It's it's good. You well, why don't we take that yeah. time to plug your podcast? Yeah. So I do a Sailor Moon podcast. Uh, Maligo was on our last episode. Uh, it's called Love and Justice, a serious Sailor Moon podcast. It's really not serious at all. Uh, it's more like a comedy podcast where we also sort of talk about Sailor Moon. Uh, but yeah, it's really fun. Uh, whenever Crystal is airing, we there, we compare uh, Sailor Moon Crystal to all the previous incarnations. Uh, it was the most fun when we were doing season one because we could also talk about Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon because they never got past the first story arc. But, you know, we still uh, will sometimes uh, throw in some deke dub comparisons. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, a lot of people uh, accuse me of hating the 90s anime. I don't. Uh, it's just my least favorite version of Sailor Moon. It's more like shonen anime with lots of filler episodes. And I know a lot of people try to argue that that's character development. I feel differently. We can agree to disagree. And I don't hate it. I like it. It's I don't think anyone's arguing with My you. least favorite version. I just, we just got a couple of... Uh, a couple of me- well, I guess they were fair iTunes reviews where okay. they were basically like... They're like, oh, they just hate the 90s anime. I'm like, clearly you don't understand comedy, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's on you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's on you. Oh, our chat room oh, just no. died. Chat room just went down. Yep. I'm going to have, nope, nobody's here, so I'll, I'll, I'll get that. Oh, I just, I think the tablet just has to be clicked back on. Yeah. That's all. Um, so we'll get to the next question. Yeah, we'll do some discording. Um, so Uber Baldi says, Emma, you do an amazing job on pencils and parsecs and are Aww. fantastic on many other jobs you have across various groups. This begs the question, if you were granted two wishes, would you have bacon with your pancakes or with your waffles? <laughs> uh, two wishes? It's on the top. Uh, I, I would have bacon uh, with pancakes. I like pancakes better than waffles. <laughs> Is that the answer to the question? Did I answer that question right? I would have said French toast. Ah. I do love pancakes. Um, every time I go out for brunch, I always have uh, the dilemma of pancakes or eggs. Uh, and... Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my answer. Uh, and anytime <laughs> I order pancakes, I'm disappointed that I didn't order eggs. So I like to go out to brunch with people who will order pancakes and let me have some of theirs. But bacon with anything is always Pretty better. good. Yeah, that's just Pretty improves good. everything. Makes everything better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ark in the chat room was saying that he wishes I would talk about Spider-Man. This is about Emma tonight. Yeah. Because uh, I would do the same thing she's doing. <laughs> I'd be like, 
yo, issue number, and you know this artist and this writer, and this thing happened, and I yeah. So That's no, great. no, <laughs> we won't. We're not gonna go into that. I I just I I relate <laughs> because my love of Spider-Man, which you know, I'm in a weird place with right now because mm -hmm. I don't like where it's been for a while. Mm -hmm. So I've been broadening. Mm -hmm. My love of things. Hey, extra knackered. Thank you for that hey. subscribe. But uh, you know, I, I keep Woo. I keep thinking that eventually it'll like yeah come back around. Come back around. Yeah. Which you know, like you've probably gone through Sailor Moon instances oh, where you're like, hey, no, totally. this isn't my thing, but I still got mm -hmm. the old thing that I love. Yes. And I'll just yes. wait for another thing yep. to eventually connect with me. So, totally fair. Um, and that's why I don't understand when people freak out about this kind of stuff. Like one of my biggest problems with nerd culture. I'll say this, is uh, I don't like it when people freak out about things that are new and don't speak to them. Yes. Because it speaks to someone else. Well, So it I doesn't speak to you. Somebody else might like and it. And that was the exact thing that was happening within the Sailor Moon fandom uh, when Sailor Moon Crystal started airing, which is yeah. the new anime series, which is a faithful adaptation of the manga in a way that the original anime series wasn't. And I think that there's a lot of people that like, they have just, you know, they've got those nostalgia glasses on big time for the 90s anime. And they're like, no, the 90s anime is so much better. And you know, Crystal's destroying my childhood and blah, blah, blah. But like for me, I, I read all of the manga before I ever saw the 90s anime series. So for me with the 90s anime series, I was like, oh, can we get to the point? Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's like already somebody's like, expect, except if it speaks to Nazis, da, da, da. Yeah, it's like, okay, well, well the whole Captain America. There's exceptions I'll, to everything. No, I honestly, I'll argue for it. Okay. I'm going to argue for that book uh, because I read comic books yeah. nonstop, and I've been reading comic books nonstop since I was nine. Mm -hmm. If people honestly come to me like, dude, Captain America is Nazi, I'm like, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Like, it's called marketing, yeah. bro. Uh, your canon is fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. your canon will be fine. Even if they rewrite it, it will eventually get turned back. Like everything in comic yeah. books, it's getting you excited about it now, talking about it now, which is what they have to do. And right. when anyone starts complaining about Nick Spencer doing that, I'm like, yo, did you read Sam Wilson, Captain America? Because that dude's literally a black Captain America that beats up like racist people on the border. Like, That's amazing. It's yeah. not... It's not like he's like pro Nazi. Captain America's Nazi now. It's like uh, there's a lot more yeah, nuanced lot things of, going on there. Yeah. Um, and uh, he writes really fun and good books. So I think it's one of those things that uh, yeah. If you go along for the ride, it's really interesting. So people just freak out about stuff. Yeah. And it's I've been reading comic books so long that it's just kind of like I don't I don't get it. But it's usually the people freaking out the most are casual readers or people mm -hmm. that don't read at all. Mm -hmm. And they just like blow up and it's like, oh, my memories. Yeah. You're ruining my childhood. Look, yep. I don't like the Michael Bay Transformer movies. Yeah, but I still like Transformers. I still like Transformers. I still watch the 1984 feature film all the time. <laughs> all the fucking time. And I quote it on the regular and that's fine. And that's yeah, the one that's musical great. I can get behind. Yeah, totally. That's a musical I can get behind. Yep. I mean, you want to talk about fucking brutal. Every character in the movie dies in the first 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah to introduce a new toy line. Yep. Thank you, 80s. But, uh, moving on. Okay. Let's move on, move on. Um, Davlin says, Emma, how did you first get to know about Hyper RPG and why did you agree to join us in Thumper? <laughs> well, uh, it was in, so I uh, am friends uh, with Erica Ishii and I knew that she had been up in Seattle, like she went up to Seattle like around she the came end to of visit. last year, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and so I was, you know, sort of familiar with what it was. Uh, and then I, uh, I got a message, uh, from Lucas who reached out to me and he's like, Hey, I don't know if you remember, but we met this one time when you were at Geek and Sundry and, uh, well, we've, we've got this channel hyper RPG and we've been up in Seattle and, you know, we're opening up, a, an LA studio and wanted to see if you would be interested uh, in joining us. Uh, how do you feel about a Star Wars RPG? And I was like, I, that sounds really fun. I'm very interested in that. Uh, and literally that night I came over here and uh, met with all of you and that's, uh, that's all she wrote. That's how it happened. 
Yeah, that was actually the easiest show to cast we've ever had. Yeah. Because every single person we messaged that were like, hey, we're doing a Star Wars RPG. They were like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah, totally. Sure, doing it. <laughs> yeah. Now, if we get audiences to respond the same way, we would be great. <laughs> but the nerds out here are just like, yeah, I'm on board. Let's yeah, do it. That's so true. Um, and then Davlin follows up that question with, which ways do you think we could become more inclusive, both as a community and as a culture? Hmm. Well, I think this kind of harkens back a little bit to what you uh, were saying, Zach, about like just because the thing that you like is doing something different from what you remember liking about the thing that you like, it's not affecting the stuff that you like already existing. So I'm very much of the opinion that like as a, as a whole, as a society, uh, Obviously, yes, we should take care of each other, but I'm also a big proponent of uh, worry about yourself. And if somebody is making a choice that you wouldn't necessarily make, but it is not hurting Yeah, as long anybody, as it doesn't hurt other people, who the fuck cares? And it's not hurting you, who cares? It's not affecting your life. No. Yeah. Uh, other people enjoying things doesn't take away your yes. enjoyment of things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I think so that, that that's kind of my, my biggest thing is that it's like, and, and for me, the other thing that I, I think is really important, and it, and it is along those lines, is to kind of like agree to disagree. And it's okay to have different opinions than people. And also accepting that like somebody's opinion is not a fact. And mm -hmm. like you should not state your opinions as if they are facts. Uh, and, and accept that people are going to disagree with you and like it's fun to disagree about stuff. Oh yeah, it's fun to debate. I mean, one of my favorite aspects of when nerd culture is good is debating with your friends. Yeah. And not in a way that's like, you're wrong, but just like, no, this is what's best. This is obviously the better movie. Right, this exactly. is obviously the better, like, yeah. this storyline from this thing is way better. You have no totally. fucking clue what you're talking about, yeah. but at the end of the day, you're still friends. And that's one of my favorite things about nerds that are getting along, but when somebody then gets mad mm -hmm. or takes it to heart and is like, no, you are wrong. Oh my gosh. Then it, then it really sucks. You're like, no, wait, no, no, I, come on. I had, uh, so on an episode uh, of the Schmoes No Live show, we did a like snubby awards where basically it was right before the Oscars and we were doing this uh, game where we were uh, arguing for movies that did not get nominated for best picture that should have been nominated for best picture. And Mark Ellis basically went in and he seeded all the movies. And so it was like, you know, number one versus number 15 or whatever uh, until we came down to one. And one of the first matchups was Dark Knight and Pan's Labyrinth. And mm. I, myself, and not just me, the majority of people, because Pan's Labyrinth won, it was good voted movie. that Pan's Labyrinth should have been nominated for an mm. Oscar over Dark Knight. And I had several people be like, no, I can't respect anything that she thinks anymore because she thinks Pan's Labyrinth oh, is better well, than Dark Knight. We won't go on a whole tirade about the interesting climate that DC <laughs> movie fans have created. <laughs> but it's something we deal with on the regular here that if you don't love DC more than anything, you're a fucking idiot yep. and you have no right to say anything about it. Even if you're like, I like this one movie a lot right. and wish they would do better sure. here and here and here. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> 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 um, and I yep. think, uh, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff uh, that really upsets me about me nerd too. culture because it's like, you can like something and still want it to be better. You can not like something but not dislike that other people liked it. Um, like, the fact that we get, as a culture now, nerds are kind of taking over mm -hmm. media. There's so many things available for us now that we're all in a pretty good fucking spot. How many yeah. superhero movies do we get a year now? And outside of that, our TV now is fucking phenomenal. Oh, so Our TV good. is just like... Yeah, TV I, is I can't watch high. all the shit that I want to watch. No, and it's all stuff that TV. young me would have been geeking the fuck out about. I was yeah. just like, oh, God, this is all so good. Yeah. It's like all the things I love. And, you know, if you don't like one thing, just go watch something else. Yeah. But when other people go out of their way to hate on people for not thinking like they do, I just do not understand that aspect. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't either. It's a pretty dumb way to live. Yeah. I, I, don't waste your energy on that Yes. Shit. Yeah. I, yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> uh, Gaika says, oh, this is for Kaiju. What is the best <laughs> dog toy? Well, Kaiju's not going to answer that right now. <laughs> um, Spider uh, asks Emma, how come you are allowed to go to work wearing your gang colors? I'm not, I'm not allowed to go to work at Universal 
uh, with my gay. So uh, at I work at Universal. I'm a tour guide. Um, and obviously, we have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter there. And we are not allowed to uh, represent any of the Hogwarts houses uh, in the park uh, if we're working. Like, we can't have, you can't wear like a Slytherin lanyard with your uniform. You'll get in trouble uh, because they don't want people to show any bias uh, to a particular house. Uh, so, uh, there, but there was a, there was a time where uh, I do have a Slytherin lanyard that I keep my employee ID on, but I don't like wear it in the park at all. But my friend John, uh, one time I was sitting in the break room and he walks in and he goes, oh, I see how it is, Emma. You're just sitting around wearing your gang colors. Uh, and so that is what he is referring to is my um, Slytherin water bottle. And my answer is I can get away with it here because this is, we don't have not, bans against not, stuff you know, outside of the Wizarding so. World of Harry Potter. Um, but let's talk about that a little bit. So you work at Universal. I do. As a tour guide? Yes. Um, now, is it a tour of the studio or just a theme park? Well, uh, yes. Both. Both. Okay. Uh, I primarily work, I, I literally have not done a tram shift in, oh, wow, a year and a half, maybe two years. Uh, so I, uh, I mostly work for VIP. Okay. Um, so that basically just means that it is uh, whoever wants to pay a lot of money uh, to have a really, really good time. Um, so uh, You mean a tour of the park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. not in a sketchy way. Uh, so basically... The I didn't assume so, it was just the way it was worded. I know, I know, I realized that too. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so the, the VIP experience, uh, I work in the office uh, okay. at VIP as well, so this is gonna sound very spiely because it is. Uh, the VIP experience uh, is about a seven hour all-inclusive experience. So you're with a tour guide and a small group of people and they take you around seven hours yeah but let me break it down for you because seven hours sounds like a lot it's but, definitely a lot but about uh uh four hours of the day is in the theme park two hours of the day is that tour of the movie studio and one hour of that is the gourmet buffet meal which is incredible like it's so fucking good i can't go to vegas buffets anymore because the buffet at moulin rouge is so fucking fantastic um uh, yeah, so again, it, and you get, uh, with your VIP lanyard, you get unlimited front of line access at all of the rides and all the shows in the park with or without your tour guide. So like during peak seasons, when we're open from like when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter opens at seven in the morning, okay. uh, and we don't close until 10 or 11 o'clock at night, like you could be on a 7 a.m. tour and you could stay until 10 o'clock and have unlimited front of line access at all the rides and shows. It's pretty dope. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so that's mostly what I do. I work in the office a lot uh, at VIP. So I'm the person that like checks people in in the morning. Um, I, I run the operation uh, usually two or three days a week. So I'm the person that's like in charge downstairs or upstairs in the office also. It just kind of depends on what my call time is. So cool. Yeah. Cool. How'd you find yourself mm -hmm. in that gig? Well, uh, when I first moved to LA, as I said, I worked at a children's theater company for a little while and then I worked at an ad agency, which I hated. Really? Weren't into the whole ad thing? It wasn't no. like Mad Men? Mm -mm. Nope. Usually not. Uh, no, did not like it. Uh, <laughs> Which that wouldn't be cool either. <laughs> no, that definitely would not be cool either, uh, especially not for a girl. Uh, anyway, uh, so I got laid off from that job because they were, they like in the time I was there, I think like 20 people got laid off before me. Like it was a big restructure. Um, and so yeah, I was, I was happy to get laid off because I didn't like the job and I was like, cool, I'll get unemployment for a little while and I'll figure it out. Uh, during that time, um, I did a little, I did some hosting gigs actually, um, here and there. And then, uh, I was at a point where I was like, oh, I'm doing pretty well. And I was like toying around with making like some vlogs and things like that. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, I just, I feel like I really need to get a job so that like a few days a week give myself permission to be done at the end of the day. Because otherwise, again, it's like, I, I am such a hustler. Uh, so obviously like it didn't really work out that yeah. way. But, uh, but in my mind, I was like, well, if I have a job that I go to like two or three times a week, like when I'm done with work, then like I can, I'll like relax and have fun. Uh, and right around that it's time, not how that works. I just, no, it's really not. Uh, it, don't deceive yourself. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I basically, um, saw an ad on Craigslist for studio tour guides. And I was like, oh, I feel like that's a job I wouldn't hate. Uh, so I went and auditioned and I didn't know it was a big deal. Uh, 
But it is a big deal. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, usually Wait, you auditioned to be a tour guide? Mm-hmm. And only audition. in LA? Yep. Yep. I swear. Uh, yeah, uh, it's actually several rounds of auditions. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, it, and, and then like an interview as well to make sure you're not crazy. Uh, <laughs> it, even still, some slip through the cracks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I, I didn't know it was a big deal, but usually um, for those tour guide auditions, they get between like, it's usually in the realm of about 500 people audition. Uh, there were 14 people in my tour guide class. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so kind of like those like theme park musical, tr uh, the yeah. people who do like the musicals and theme parks where people just think like, oh, it's whatever, and it's just it's like, not. and then behind it's the curtain, so it's not. like people are super competitive, yep. it's really hardcore, and it's like the cruise ships and stuff too. Yeah, I only know that I used to work at a theme park, so it was just like we were. It's we were, it's as the art group, like we did the character drawing, we yeah, were kind yeah, of yeah. away from the park, yeah. just as the people who did the performing were like away from the park, mm -hmm. but we had to hear about all their shit. It was like, yeah. damn, they take that shit super seriously. Yeah. Like yeah. it's hardcore. Yeah, it is. And it was one of those things where I think because I went into it being like, I don't know, this would be a cool job. And yeah, I didn't yeah. like have my heart set on it. I like was very relaxed and you know, I just had to like read copy and talk about myself and do a little like improvised uh, commercial section where we were uh, doing a fake promo for a new show on NBC. Uh, it was re it was really fun. I remember like a couple people actually that got into my um, tram training class were in the same like group with me, uh, and so it was basically them making sure that you could have a beginning, a middle, and an end of a story. And I remember in my group, um, I was on the end, and all the groups that had gone before us, they didn't wrap up their story. The person on the end didn't wrap up the story. The person on the end got buzzed, got the timer, and so they were done. But I like wrapped up my story, and because, because again, it was like a promo for something I did, like a little like Instagram and Twitter plug. I like made up a hashtag, and I was Jesus. like, I got this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cupcake Therapy wants to know, Emma, do you believe in having a list of life goals to achieve? If yes, what is on yours? You know, I, I kind of don't. Uh, just from the point of view of, I, I think that if you get too specific about your life goals, then you won't enjoy the journey of your life. So for me, it's like, I have to some degree, I basically in my, in my brain, what I kind of like put out into the universe is like, I want to be a host. I want to yeah. be on the internet and I want to talk about the things that I like. And I started doing my Sailor Moon podcast, which was the first sort of online presence for me that like really, really stuck. Uh, and from there I got involved with After Buzz and just I just kind of kept going down that path being like, you know what, I'm going to keep doing this thing that I like. And I find that what I want to do evolves. And oh, yeah. honestly, like I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. And I mean, I, I, ha I, I don't, it's because, work hard. because I work really mm -hmm. hard and because I am constantly putting myself out there that most of my like paying gigs that I'm doing now, I, I was contacted about them. I didn't, I didn't go audition. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's because I'm out there doing the work, you know, so. It, it, right. And I think LA is very interesting that way. Most creative fields are. Yeah. Um, and I think it would be very limiting to have life goals yeah. or career goals in LA because it's simultaneously extremely out of your control. Mm hmm but the only way to move forward is to never stop moving forward. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you set yourself to this goal where you're just like, okay, by this year, I'm going to have a movie. Oh, or no, I'm no, gonna no. I'm going to be cast you, in this thing. You like, you're that. just going to lead yourself to disappointment. Mm -hmm. But if you just work really fucking hard and never give up, you might find yourself in that position one day. Yeah. Or you'll find yourself in a totally different role. It's a, I don't know. It is weird. Because I understand, like, growing up in the middle of nowhere, I understand needing those goals... Mm -hmm to keep yourself driven and moving towards a oh, point. Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, but it's almost like micro goals are a mm -hmm. thing here. And it probably has something to do with the set culture 
and how a project comes up and goes away and it comes yeah. up and comes away it, it and comes up and does. goes away and comes up and goes away. I feel like for me right now, because I, I am getting a lot of like paid freelance gigs, which has been incredible, um, that I, I'm at this point where I'm like, I want to, my goal right now, and again, as you say, it's like little micro goals. I'm like, I want to reduce my availability at Universal. <laughs> you know, it's not like I want to up and leave. Like I appreciate the gig that I have, mm -hmm. but like I, I am ready for the next step, but the next step is never that extreme. Yeah. It's just a, I, I, I don't know. It's always interesting to look back on my life like, oh, five years ago, never would have believed yeah. this is what I'd be doing. Like, yeah. oh, I'll be sitting on a couch talking to this person I work with <laughs> for an audience of hundreds of people yeah. about stuff and yeah, people exactly. give a shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's bizarre. Uh, yeah, it's it's very bizarre. And it's just by, yeah, it's uh, yes ending life, you yeah. know, and just be like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, this thing came up. Yeah. All right, and fucking I, do it. And I think uh, like Amy Poehler um, said in her book, I, I think that, that like, you know, sort of a lot of the big comedy ladies who've kind of created a lot of their own stuff, like Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, are like big inspirations to me because it's like ladies out there doing stuff. Uh, and Amy Poehler's advice is like, yeah, just you say yes to everything and you figure it out later. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. I read both their books. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting how similar but different they yes, are. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. Very different viewpoints. Yep. Um, Savage Punch says, Emma, strength to strength, what is the toughest animal you could fight and win against? Mm, toughest animal I could fight and win against. I'm pretty scrappy. Uh, I think, uh, well, I was very confident uh, that I could... Uh, take down a very wolf-like dog um, one time. Uh, wait, I, wait, wait, one time. Yeah, like in my, no, like I, th I still think I could, but like I had a very real moment where I thought I was going to have to, so, cause my cousin and I were being chased by a dog. Uh, and it was, it was like a big, like wolf, scary kind of mm -hmm. dog. Um, and if it hadn't, followed us, I had reasoned out in my head, because she's little, she's younger than me, she's smaller than me, that it was going to attack her, not me, because she was littler, uh, and that I was going to have to, I, I had a sarong on, we were like walking, it was a whole thing where we got lost in the marsh, anyway, uh, but like we were in like bathing suits, because we'd gone for a walk on the beach and then got lost in a marsh, um, so I was like, I could strangle that dog with my sarong, the sarong that I had on, I was like, I could, I could definitely take it down. Uh, yeah. You saw it all in your head how I it was going to play out. I really did. I like played it out in my head of like how I was going to rescue my cousin from this wolf dog. That's how most of my days go okay. when I'm ever out in public. I don't go out in public that often. That's I usually true. don't leave the studio. Zach has his groceries delivered to here. I do. <laughs> That's not a joke. Yeah. My Amazon bag is sitting on the yeah. counter. In the Yes, I don't leave. Uh, but when I do and I get yeah. out in public, I'm one of those people that will scope every area around me and start planning Okay, when mm -hmm. this happens, this is mm -hmm. who I have to take out yeah. first. This is how it's going to go down. Yeah. And it's like, I've already thought about it. This is how I'm getting out of this situation. This is exactly how we're going to survive. Yeah. Don't worry about it, Malika. I got your back. We're going to survive this no matter what. <laughs> um, so let's see. Moving on to the next question. Duganator asks, mm -hmm. Emma, what is your favorite trope in anime and what is your least favorite trope? Oh, okay. Well, my least favorite trope is the uh, love interests who were raised as brother and sister but aren't related to each other. I fucking hate that trope. If you are raised as brother and sister, like you're, you're brother and sister, the end. I'm also like a really big believer in- How much does Flash weird you out? Cause it weirds oh me out. Oh my God, I f no. I can't get over I it. I just know. Cause I have a sister. Mm -hmm. We were raised together. Right. And we didn't even sleep in the same house, but like my, her parents and my parents were best friends. We were right. raised together. That's my sister. Yes. And when I watch The Flash, I just can't get no. over it. I'm like, nah, mm -hmm. dude, mm -hmm. fucking gross. You even call that guy dad in the first season. Yeah, no. You know? Mm -mm. Nope. Uh, yes, yeah, so you hate Mary Allen and Iris. As a matter of fact, Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I, oh, no, I hate that Can't so much. Can't get over it. Uh, and then my favorite trope, uh, I mean, I, I love a good reverse harem, you know? <laughs> like, I love it when there's a whole bunch of guys in love with the same girl. Because <laughs> that's not. You guys had a whole conversation about K-drama in here yesterday. Yeah, uh -huh, And that's we did. a very, yeah. And yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing about, uh, um, uh. No, the Lannisters are a different thing, Pash. See, that's actual brother and sister who are sleeping together, which I also have a problem with. Um, 
because that's really gross. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, Malika and I did have a conversation about K-dramas in here and how basically every uh, K-drama is a, um, uh, a reverse Malika was like, we should do K-drama uh, yeah. watch-alongs because <laughs> yeah. everyone I know loves them. And I'm like, yeah, your friend's in L.A. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she's like, see, Emma. And I'm like, yeah, your friend in L.A. <laughs> like, literally. Um, so in comic books, my least favorite trope is that your parents have to die for you to be a hero. Yep. I'm not a fan of that. Yep. I'm over it. It's just kind of like we can, you can be a hero without that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my favorite trope is the whole people making their own costumes the first time. Oh, yeah. It's just always like, oh, I love you know that. what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my own costume. Yeah. I'm going to sew it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there. I'm going to put this thing on and yeah. we'll look out, world. Yeah. That's one of my favorite, yep, definitely. favorite tropes. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Nagiyama says, Emma, anime, subbed, Ooh. dubbed. What's the preference? I have my preference for sure. Uh, my preference uh, is subbed. And this is why I have a brain that is constantly trying to do 25 things at once. So for me, part of the reason I love anime and K-dramas so much is I do not understand what they're saying. So I have to read the subtitles and it makes me pay attention more. I'm going to say subbed just because nuances get lost in dubs. I, I agree with that as well. And most of the stuff I've watched both versions of, mm -hmm. I've been very surprised to see how key story elements or personality Feel traits very different are totally dub. missing. I totally agree. Because they're having to manipulate a little mm -hmm. too much mm -hmm. to make it fit and make it feel right. And I yeah. don't like it, especially when it feels like entire characters have a different persona because there's certain things missing. Yeah. No, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and like, I am not a dub hater by any means. I have many friends that that is how they make their living. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just, the thing about the way, and, and it's interesting because in Japan, they still animate first, but the actors are all together when they dub over, when they do the like automated dialogue replacement ADR sessions. Um, and here you're usually alone in a booth. Um, so I don't really pay attention to performances. Okay. I will say that. I'm, if anything, I think my brain tricks me into thinking a language I don't understand is being performed better because yeah. I can't tell that it's worse. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I don't really pay attention to performances at all. Yeah. Just, just the script, I guess. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So Cupcake Therapy said, Hassan Y123 asked, how did you get to join After Buzz? Well, uh, a lot of people uh, who I know, uh, well, I, a couple other tour guides uh, were doing stuff there, is the long and the short of it. Uh, and I was like, hey, I, I want to go do stuff at After Buzz. And so I like reached out to I, who I didn't know at the time was Roxy, but I now know is Roxy. And uh, she was like, yeah, come in. We're having a new host orientation on this day. And then basically I went home and you have to like fill out this questionnaire and do a little self tape video of you just talking about mm -hmm. the show that you like. Um, I talked about Sailor Moon. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah, that's, uh, that's how I got into After Buzz. Right on. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> um, Crash, B Crash B Gaming mm -hmm. wants to know what both of our first Star Wars gateway immersion point. Gateway immersion. Like point. what? When did you decide you were a Star Wars fan? What oh, got you in? I mean, like literally the first time I ever saw New Hope, and it was in the first few minutes when you see 100%. Princess Leia. Like, come on, she's great. Uh, yeah, I just you know, mine was the fucking cover of the VHS tape. Yeah, yeah. As a kid, I saw that. I was like, yes. Yeah. We're watching this. Yep. Yeah. My, and, I, I don't think my parents even showed me the cover. I think they just put it on. I mean, I. Guys, I saw the entire original trilogy by the time I was four. Oh, me so, too. So, like, again, it was like the, my parents just, like, put the movie on. Here's Star yep. Wars. Awesome. Yep. Within a few years, I had graduated from kindergarten. And in my kindergarten graduation, I had a white graduation robe. And I would run around and pretend to be Princess Leia in that. <laughs> it was my sister and I's favorite movie. Yeah. We watched them over and over. I would fall asleep at night to... So, we had the original VHS. Mm -hmm with the awesome cover on that VHS tape. Mm, so good. But my dad got really upset because we watched it too much and was starting to mess up the tape. <laughs> so then we had the VHS 
like eight hour long VHS tape that had one, two, and three, you know, all, all of them, all three, four, five, and six, whatever, on, uh, on one, and for a large portion of my young adult life, mm-hmm. like young child life, yeah. preteen, I thought Empire and Return of the Jedi were one movie. Because what kept happening is I'd put it on, right. and I'd put it on while I was trying to sleep. Because I had a TV and VCR as a kid in my room when I was really young, because I just loved yeah. watching movies. And I'd fall asleep about midway through Empire and wake up midway through Return of the Jedi, or like like in and out of moments, you know, and could never get all the way through all three in one setting. Mm-hmm. But with those VHSs, we weren't allowed. This was a no-no. You weren't allowed to like fast forward to a spot you want because you're gonna ruin the fucking tape. So I, I had see, to start I on see. one. And I had to keep watching all the way through, and then I would always lose myself. Yeah. Um, and this was like until I was like 12 or 13. Yeah. By, by around 12, I was I knew, but most of when I was a little, real small kid, I was like, I just thought Empire and I, uh, Return of the Jedi. I sort of had movie. the opposite uh, happen to me, where basically uh, my uh, so I had seen uh, New Hope several times, mm-hmm. and then I saw Empire Strikes Back, and. Yeah. Again, I was really little. I was like three years old. Right. Um, so Empire Strikes Back, I loved it, but it was so scary to me as a kid. Mm. Um, that that beginning scene when uh, Luke gets caught by the Wampa. Fucking like, loved it. it was, but like that thing was like, it was so scary, but I loved it. I yeah. loved stuff that scared me when I was a kid. Me too. Um, but, you know, the, as a kid, your concept of the ending of Empire Strikes Back is not a satisfying ending to a film. No. Like, that that doesn't exist to a, to a three-year-old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm just watching this cool thing that I like, and it has this really scary ending, and maybe that's just how it ends. Uh, so I, um, so then I remember my little brother was a baby, and I was like, you know, I climbed, I used to climb over the edge of his crib to hang out with him. Uh, and so I was like, sitting with my brother in his crib, messing with him, because there was a mirror in his crib, and he thought there was another baby. Like, he loved to <laughs> he loved to look in the mirror. Uh, so I used to really um, encourage that. And then I um, jumped out of the crib, and my parents were in the room down the hallway, and I could hear the, the TV was on. They were clearly watching something. Uh, and so I went in there, and it was right at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. And so I think I, I got in just as, like, Leia was getting uh, Han Solo out of the carbonite, and I was like furious that my parents were watching the Star Wars movie without me, especially because I didn't know it existed. So I was like, yeah. my, mom, my mom to this day is always, because I tell the story a lot, and she's always like, she's like, I don't feel like we were withholding that information from you. I'm like, you weren't. I was three. Like, yeah. it's fine. Uh, yeah, and so I, uh, I basically. Uh, <laughs> just sat down and was like, I'm watching this with you right now. Uh, and so that was <laughs> that was how I discovered the existence of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, those are definitely, yeah, most of my childhood was a rotation between the original Ninja Turtles movie uh-huh. and the three Star Wars oh, yeah. movies, just oh, yeah. over and over again. Yeah, over I, over. I, I used and to And the Ninja watch. Turtles cartoons, I had all, I had all every oh season. Oh my God, I love Every time a new Turtles. season came out, my grandma at Christmas would get me the new season on VHS, mm-hmm. and I just, yeah. Yep. I still, actually, I'm coming up on. I need to do it again. I, Malika hasn't experienced this yet. Every couple of years, I rewatch every single original Ninja Turtles cartoon episode. There's oh. ten seasons, and some of those seasons are very long. Yeah. There's a lot of them. And then I go back and do St- Spider-Man animated series. Okay. All right. X-Men. Nice. Every couple of years. Every I couple like of years. I like it. Um, it's important. Yeah. It's very Definitely. important. Uh, Carlin asks, how much does it suck doing taxes when self-employed in the entertainment? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, fortunately, there's a, a lot of uh, tax professionals out here that specialize in that because that's what a lot of people do. So fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, it was really bad for me until I got this job. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm working here... Mm-hmm. Uh, with the company, yeah, um, I'm full time and not freelance anymore. So, mm-hmm. you know, it makes a big difference. Yeah, and and the other thing is too is that like uh, there's certain like QuickBooks uh, has a really great app that kind of like lets you track your purchases and like you just load you know your bank accounts to it basically, and then you can be like, yes, this is something that I can write off on my taxes. No, this is not, and you can kind of keep track of it 
that way rather than like physically keeping track of your receipts. So I, I do that also. Um, I definitely don't. And, I'm really bad uh, at that stuff. Uh, and then uh, TurboTax actually for just like a little extra money has a really nice um, self-employed thing where you basically just enter your expenses and it figures it out for you. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Davlin says, Emma, did you know Hyper used to have a trivia show called Trivia Hops? Given your experience with the trivia show, what do you feel makes them fun, and then what makes them watchable? Well, the one that I uh, am specifically involved in, uh, the movie trivia schmodown, uh, it's, it, guys, I know that movie trivia is in the title. I know that movie trivia is a big part of the show. Don't be deceived. It is a wrestling show. Uh, we use all of the wrestling tropes, you know? We've got characters, we've got heels, we've got baby faces, we've got biased uh, So are you mainly a contestant on the show or do you uh, work I've, on the I've show? I've participated uh, in the Schmodown before. I've competed in uh, the team matches. I will also be uh, participating in uh, an inner geekdom uh, tournament coming up sometime soon. Uh, but I am, uh, I'm a, the post-game interviewer, uh, primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I mostly do. That's what I am known for uh, on the movie Trivia Schmodown. I'm kind of the mean gene of the Schmodown. Uh, you guys are familiar with a uh, wrestling commentator interviewer by the name of Mean Gene Okerlund. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's what makes it fun, is that like we have this whole story behind it um and it's it's not just like people showing up and answering movie trivia that's that's what's fun about it now we have lots of people on the schmodown that are incredibly good at movie trivia and then we just have like really great personalities like mm -hmm. <laughs> ricky from the etc show he is terrible if you've seen the schmodown you know that he answers maybe one question right in the entire match. He is actually terrible at movie trivia, but people love watching him play because like he's such a heel and like it's just fun. Uh, yeah, so that, that I think uh, is the main like reason that that show is as successful and watchable as it is. Like I, I enjoy watching it. Like I love going back and being like, oh, how did this get edited? So yeah, cool. it's fun. Um, <laughs> Negyama wants to know, mm -hmm. Emma, how was your overall experience with the charity drive? What did you enjoy the most? Uh, I was so sick that weekend. Uh, I wanted to participate more. Uh, uh, for as miserable as I was feeling, uh, I was uh, the a freaking um, uh, One Piece RPG it was like a real, real highlight for me. I mean, obviously, like our episode of Pencils and Parts X was so, <laughs> so fun and like. Bert put so much effort into, uh, you know, crafting this story that it was like a kid playing with his action figures, and it was it was just brilliant. Uh, and freaking Dan Casey as Max Rebo, I was like, oh, you had to pick somebody totally useless, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, you definitely did. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, that that One Piece RPG was amazing. I mean, Matt was so knowledgeable and passionate and like we just all went like balls to the walls anime on it and it was it was amazing and if you guys missed that we're gonna be doing it again yeah, I'm next so weekend <laughs> next saturday the 13th we're gonna be doing another one piece one-off it'll be fun yeah um adam asks mm -hmm. empire or a new hope <laughs> Mine's Empire, 100%. Mm -hmm. Empire yeah. is not just my favorite Star Wars film, it's one of my favorite films mm -hmm. of all time. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a huge Empire Strikes Back uh, fan. As I said, like when I was a kid, that definitely had a very profound effect on me. And that, like, I loved New Hope, I really did, but like Empire I was like, oh, this is scary, I really like it. Uh, and, you know, you get so much great, uh, like, world building and character building, and uh, like, once you get to Empire, you get a better scope of, like, the galactic struggle. Uh, not only do you flesh out this sort of battle of good and evil mythology, Jedi stuff at the center of it, but like for me, and, I, and I've said this a lot about Star Wars, like I love the bigger picture stuff. I love the universe of Star Wars. I love all of the, the side characters who are involved in the rebellion who aren't the Jedi. Um, so you definitely, you get so much more into that in Empire than you do in New Hope. So. It's actually, and it's shot really well too. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's the it's the most technically well made mm -hmm. of the Star Wars films so far, um, which 
gets me excited. Yeah. Like yeah. when the when the high def version came out, despite the little changes, just seeing those right. shots in HD and those sets were just so well built. Yeah. It's it's really beautiful. It's really amazing. Yep. Um, Let's adapt says Emma. What was your worst audition? Hmm. Your worst audition experience. Um, I think I it's got it's a long time since I've auditioned for anything. I thought you were about to say, it's been a long time since I had a bad audition. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just been a long time since I've auditioned uh, in general. Um, I think uh, one of my, uh, one of the ones I can remember, I've, I've never gone into an audition and been like, oh man, I totally sucked. Like I, I've gone in and been like, yeah, I'm not what they're looking for, mm -hmm. is more often the case. So you don't get, like, audition jitters? No, I mean, I, I mean, I get a little, like, adrenaline get, like, and stuff going into it, but I don't... I don't never bomb, I've really? never, I've never... I've been casting really... for things and had people bomb hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, again, and it's like, oh, I've had, like, you know, shitty auditions, but never, like, a, oh, I, like, totally bombed. It's more like, nah, she's all right. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember there was auditions for uh, like some musical in LA uh, not too, too long ago. Uh, it was several years back and a friend of mine was auditioning for it. It was something about like, I don't know, angry Disney princesses or something. Um, and uh, I, I went into audition. I had a great audition song, uh, but I just was not, <laughs> I was not in full voice that day and not of the notes. Uh, <laughs> For that song, uh, yeah. So I went to sing the high note of the song, and it just it didn't happen. And I was like, "Well, uh, that sucked." Uh, moving on. But yeah, I just I don't. Uh, I'm not the kind of person to like beat myself up over things. And the thing that's really nice about being in a place like LA, where so many people are so focused on creating, is that like if it's not there's always more opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's just kind of the way you have to go about it, is being like, Yeah, it oh, seems like the more you, yeah, you have to kind of tell yourself, like, it doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. if, if it matters too much, you're gonna bomb. You're, you're gonna, gonna burn out real gonna, fast. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Final Fantasy Master mm -hmm. says, can you sing us a bit of your favorite song? <laughs> uh, Sure. I don't know what my favorite <laughs> song is. Chat room. I actually one time, like legit, in an acting class, we were doing this, like, you know, a, a weird. This is weird college acting class stuff where you're like sitting in like just a chair in like a dark com room, like being interviewed. And I remember the first thing that I was asked was, "What is your favorite song?" And I was like, "I don't have one." I got so upset because I don't like I, you know, I, I have a favorite color. Um, uh, let's see though, uh, I, uh, I know, you know, I've been on a, a Hamilton kick since Hamilton uh, came out at all, so uh, yeah, uh, I'll do a little of the beginning of uh, Satisfied. So it's uh, a toast to the groom, to the bride, from your sister, who is always by your side. To your union and the hope that you provide. May you always be satisfied. There you go, I sang a little. <laughs> it's actually just nodding. Honesty hour. Yeah, <laughs> musicals. <laughs> Final Fantasy Master then asks, mm -hmm. Emma, have you read House of Leaves? If so, what are your thoughts? So, nope, haven't got it? I have not. Nope, haven't heard it. Heard haven't even it. heard of it? Nope. Cool, 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 cool. We're going to move on to the next question. Perfect. Then. Cocaine <laughs> Therapy asks, Sorry. to both of you, what would you do if you were invisible for a day? Ooh, if I were invisible for a day. Um, I would, hmm. Hmm. Probably. Hmm. I don't think about being invisible that much because I'm so focused on being visible. You know what I mean? Yeah, I actually think about being invisible a lot. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> but I would change nothing about my day. 
Well, in the sense yeah. of, I wouldn't go on camera. It'd be like right. great to be invisible for the day and just sit in the backyard and listen to some audio books and mm -hmm. read some comics and yeah. that be it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I would be probably great. do. Uh, yeah, I would just be able to like live my life and not have anybody bother me. <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> um, mm. Nagyama then asks, is that Utina? Utena. Utena, yes. yay or nay? I have an Utena tattoo, so, so yay. That's a so that's yes, yay. Now, can you explain yes. to me what that is? Because I have no idea. Yeah, uh, Utena is uh, uh, an anime series. Uh, it's a magical girl dystopian fiction uh, art nouveau anime series about a girl who uh, decides that she wants to be a prince uh, after, from her, in her memory, again, it's like uh, there's a lot of like unreliable narrator stuff. Uh, she um, uh, basically, uh, her parents die when she's little and then in her mind like a prince shows up on that day and like comforts her and then gives her this rose crest ring. Uh, and she's so impressed with him that she decides that she wants to be a prince. Uh, it's very complicated uh, and bizarre, but it's amazing. Sounds really interesting. I might have yeah. to look it up. Yeah, it's really good. Well, to continue with the anime discussion, mm -hmm. Rex705 then asks, have you seen the anime Maho Shoujo, Shoujo Lyrical Nanoha? Um, I, when uh, you don't watch an anime and you see these names, I'm yeah, like, I yeah. don't know how to pronounce uh, it. I am familiar with it. I have not watched it. I have many people who tell me that they think I would really like it mm -hmm. um, because I like uh, giant robots. I don't know if they're at all connected, but I, I feel like that's the one that people have been like, you'd probably really like this one. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I, I'm familiar with it, but I have not watched it. I also really like giant robots. Mm -hmm. uh, no time for meta, just subscribe. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so is the, do these giant robots punch each other um, in the show? I, in Lyrical Nanoha? Yeah. Probably. Cool. No, yeah. I'll check it out. <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for like the next iteration. Well, okay. So I'm a big Neon Genesis fan yeah. of Angelion. I love Angelion. Uh, <laughs> despite Shinji being one of the most anno annoying protagonists of all time, uh, I love that show. I love the art direction mm -hmm. and some of the scenes and shots in the original oh, anime yeah. are just well. Oh, I haven't seen the fourth. Didn't the fourth movie just come out? Yeah, they've been they've been doing a I series saw the third. of movies now that are. And the third yeah. was just like, like. It was yeah. first and second. It was like, okay, this is just a retelling right, of the show. Right, and then right. the third came out. I was like, what the like, fuck what is happened? going on? What, what the happened? fuck is going yeah. on? And I've been scared to watch the fourth one. Because yeah. I'm I'm not, I like, I don't know. I don't know if you guys saw this this morning when we were playing Atlas Reactor. One of the characters playing us, they gave they gave me a Neon Genesis skin oh, for one cool. of the characters. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Uh, but I love that show. I oh, love, Evangelion is I'll never great. forget like some of the shots when like Shinji's staying in the house mm -hmm. and like, the door opens and the shadow just goes across well, the floor and, and it's like a top-down weird show. I'm like, those are the only the kind of things you can get when you draw the show. Yes, and like, as an you're adult... You're in complete control of the frame. And one of the other things I love about Evangelion 2 is like, as an adult, like, I just love Misato as a character so much. Because even watching as a kid, I was like, this is so great to see this adult woman who's like a mess. But like she's a mess for a good reason. Uh, yeah, uh, Evangelion is great. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. It's it's so good. Oh, I love it. Um, do you have any good stories about tours you've guided? Well, any weird ones? Uh, any weird ones? Um, Everyone's just so into anime. We haven't really. Like, I know. Yeah, gotten into my life. Gotten into like the weird stuff. Uh, uh, tours that I've guided. Uh, I took around. Uh, um, Jimmy Fallon once, that was really fun. That's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. He was filming uh, an episode of uh, The Tonight Show. Uh, so he usually comes out to LA once a year to do like a week of The Tonight Show in LA. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, uh, I was very, it was a very weird day. I was working in the office at VIP. I was actually door greeter that day. So I'm like the first person you see when you come to the door to check in for a tour. And uh, Chisa, one of my supervisors, came out and Chisa has this way of like making, she's Japanese, uh, and she has this way of like making every 
like small requests seem incredibly important and intense. So she came out and she's like, Emma, you need to go up and see Mary Pat right away. Mary Pat's my boss. And so I'm like, uh, okay. So I go upstairs and she goes, go meet Denise. Denise is her boss at the Globe. Uh, you're taking Jimmy Fallon around. I was like, oh, okay, great. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, so. Um, was it the full crew or is it just his it was team? His, no, it was, it was amazing. It was him uh, and a whole bunch of ladies that work on The Tonight Show. And we only had like a couple hours. Uh, so we just like went on, we like got picked up in a van went on some rides, uh, and then dropped him off at stage one to go do The Tonight Show. Literally, it was like the gap of time he had between filming Extra in the morning uh, and doing The Tonight Show in that afternoon. Interesting, interesting. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, we'll get a couple more of these questions. Mm-hmm. We might dive into some more of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, have you been to Japan? I have. Okay, uh, what was your favorite aspect of Japan? Oh man, my favorite thing about Japan was if you ever go to Japan, um, shopping, like the stores in Japan are really kind of different than stores in the US. Um, In that like, so especially in like certain districts in Tokyo, uh, so I spent a lot of time just like exploring weird shops in like Akihabara, which is sort of the, uh, it, it, it's technically like they, there's a lot of stores that sell like weird electronics uh, and also like little collectible things and it's just a re- it's a really interesting um, district and so so many of the shops there it was like you'd go in and you'd be in a, a room that was like smaller than the room that we're sitting in but then there'd be a staircase mm-hmm. in the back corner and then you would go up and there'd be another, and they would just go on and on for like seven stories just full of like stuff and so many of it was like this floor has manga and this floor has some doujinshi that is in shrink wrap probably for a good reason uh and then this next floor has little kitchen knickknacks and then this floor has anime keychains and so it was a lot of like just like exploring and like finding all these weird little things like i i found um and i still have it this really adorable uh, keychain of uh, Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII, uh, but in her like Advent Children outfit, and it's like chibi version, so she's like really cute and little. Um, and it was just like, and it's not like in any kind of fancy packaging or anything. Yeah. It was just like literally in the shop that was full of plastic bags that had this kind of stuff in it. I had like a chocobo reading a book uh, keychain, and I found um, this like little tiny. Figurine. It's like one of my favorite things that I own uh, of Lady Un from Gundam Wing. That's just like, I don't know, it's like about yay sized. So I don't know, maybe four, like five inches. Uh, and yeah, it's just like this little plastic rubber figurine. And she's like looking all conniving because it's her and her like evil version with glasses. Uh, yeah. What did you end up going to Japan for? Like what originally took you there? Uh, that was when I was on tour. Uh, the company I worked for did a lot of work. Wait, the children's tour mm-hmm. took yep. you to Japan? Mm-hmm. So you weren't kidding when you said they took you all, all over, over the place. All over the place. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, we um, uh, basically had a uh, um, a program where we worked with military bases overseas. Okay, uh, okay. So we did a, a few overseas tours. Uh, in my last summer, I applied to go overseas, and I was very adamant that I wanted to go to Japan. Um and so it worked out. So yeah, I was doing plays with you know the kids on the military bases and at like uh, um, sort of international school. Like I did an international school in Shanghai. Um, but yeah, I- and when I was in Japan, yeah, I got I got to kind of go all over the place. And we s- we stayed an extra week at the end. Like basically, uh, when we when my tour partner Jordan and I went, uh, he and I were like, yeah, we definitely want to stay in Japan at the end of our tour. Uh, and so Missoula was like, cool, we will book your flight back from Tokyo to Missoula uh, on this date that's a week after. You guys are in Okinawa before that, so we leave it up to you to get to Tokyo and get home. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. What other countries did they send you to? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was, uh, my tour was an Asia tour, so I was in Japan mostly, uh, and then I was in China and South Korea. 
I've, I really want to go to South Korea. Oh my That's god. That's one of my favorites, mainly because South Korean film is mm -hmm. one of my favorite mm -hmm. like countries that's doing film right now. Yeah. Um, despite the lack of like unions and regulations on right, how workers right. are treated, uh, the stuff coming out of there to me is like the French wave in mm -hmm. the 60s. Like it's just, there's some really interesting things yeah. happening um, and uh, such an intriguing mm -hmm. thing too because I find it interestingly similar to America and it's outwardly extremely conservative mm -hmm. Um, but then there's like the things that you don't talk about that are hidden underneath, whereas Japan's more like, <laughs> just, just put it, all put out, it there. out there. <laughs> just fucking wear, wear yeah. that shit on your sleeve, but then be very reserved people, whereas yeah. we're kind of the opposite. We're very loud and brash. Yeah. And it's interesting. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't, I, I haven't been to any Asian countries. Mm. Uh, that's probably going to change very soon. Malika really wants us to go to Thailand, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where she's from. And maybe we'll try to hit up some more while yeah. we're on about. I would like yeah, to. Yeah, I, I would. I want to go back to uh, uh, South Korea and Japan very badly. I really, really enjoyed uh, both of those places. I'm glad that I went to uh, Shanghai, uh, but I'm not anxious to go back. Uh, China's very interesting. Yeah. I want to go to Hong Kong. Uh, I would love to go to Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. Woo! I mean, how much... Now, when... Okay, wait, it has... Okay, until... there's t Until 2046, right? 2046 is when... I think so. They sell back to China. Yeah. So it's like... Or they get... Ba I don't know. I can't remember. I need to go back. I, yeah. I, I want to go to Hong Kong really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if anything, so Wong Kar Wai is probably my favorite filmmaker... Okay. ...of all time. Uh, and the duo of him and Christopher Doyle is my favorite filmmaking duo of all, to all time. But I'm, it's one of those things I'm also a little bit nervous, too. Um, because whereas I, I love Lynch films mm -hmm. because it reminds me of where I'm from. Mm -hmm. When Lynch is at my favorite Lynch, which is like Blue Velvet, mm -hmm. Twin Peaks, things like that. Right. It, to me, is tapping into this absurdity that only exists in reality. Okay. Uh, and it reminds me of home, and it reminds me of the interesting gotcha. characters I grew up around, and the weird moments that I encountered as a, as a young individual. So it's not romanticized, mm -hmm. it's reality. Mm -hmm. And I've romanticized Hong Kong because of Wong Kar Wai's lens. I get it. Nope, so I I'm, I'm kind that. of nervous to go that. because of, of movies like In the Mood for Love, um, Chunking Express, like there's this romanticism of the way it's portrayed. Sure, sure. And I know that's not what it is. And right. I'm, I'm nervous yeah. to go there. Yeah, I yeah I get that. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like you know they say like oh don't meet your heroes. It's like don't don't go to these locations that yeah, you built up to be something in something your head. Something that they're not. But yeah. I, but from a lot of my fan, friends who are anime fans mm -hmm. love Japan and yeah. they don't they go there I, because they're anime fans and then they come back just like oh my god uh, it was amazing. Yeah, I was not disappointed. I mean, the everyone in uh, Japan. It's just a different, like, cultural approach to life than we have. Uh, in from the point of view that, like, everyone who's doing something in Japan, like, they take great pride in their work. So, like, service in Japan is incredible, um, and uh, you know, there's people. There's no like tipping or anything like that. It's actually insulting to give a tip uh, in Japan. Um, yeah, and I mean, like, Tokyo is, it's so clean. Like, it's weird how clean it is. That's how I felt about, uh, Toronto. Yeah. And it was right after the riots, yeah. too. Um, and people were apologizing because of the graffiti and stuff. But I was like, yo, I live in, like, I, at the time I lived mm -hmm. in downtown Kansas City. And I was like, this is the cleanest city I've ever been to, and mm -hmm. it's weird. Like, being in a mega metropolis and seeing it spotless yeah. is strange it's to me. It's very strange. Because what I, part of what I love about L.A. is it's so lived in. And the graffiti everywhere. Yeah. And this, there's, the, the culture is uh -huh. just exploding oh, out yeah, of it. Totally. it. The culture can't be contained. Definitely. Uh, so really, really clean cities weird mm -hmm. me out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, it's like, again, it's because, like, like everyone in Japan, I, I mean... I, some of it, I'm sure, was 
you know, I'm a little blonde girl, so I'm very exotic over there. Uh, but I, I, I've never been like treated better. You know, what I, like everyone was so polite and just nice and welcoming and entertained by me. I don't know. I, I had a great time in Japan. I lived in, yeah, I did a, a whole summer in like Central America and that was not my experience. <laughs> <laughs> It was, how yeah. many ways can we fuck over the gringo because yeah. you think bringing a Bible down here will fix our country. Let's fuck you over. And I'm like, I didn't do it. <laughs> it wasn't me. <Yep. laughs> it wasn't me. Stop selling me bones wrapped in mm-hmm. banana leaves. Um, Emma, any tips for someone that wants to start a podcast that the main focus is one uh, theme, like a TV show or video game ETC? Is it more difficult coming up with content for one theme or many? Asks Geek40. It is uh, more difficult for, from my, this is my opinion, I think it's more difficult uh, coming up with content when uh, you're focusing on multiple themes. Because if you're focused on one theme, then it, it's better because I, it kind of like narrows your focus on like the kind of stuff that you want to talk about. That being said, it's like on my Sailor Moon podcast, like we we sometimes talk about like other magical girl anime or like during October, we just talked about, you know, more like horror anime and things like that, that we just decided that we wanted to do that. Um, but when, when you narrow your focus, because the problem is if you have a really big spectrum of what you're talking about, then your first few episodes, you probably got them planned out, you're excited, you're good to go. And then you fall into this trap of, well, what do we want to talk about this week? That's, that's what I find. I, I yep. find that having you know, a more narrow focus actually really helps me I would agree. determine what I, we're going to talk about. I would about. say one of the problems we have here at Hyper is we're trying to reach a broader audience mm-hmm. um, because you can't find us on Twitch as a niche. Um, and that's unfortunate because mm-hmm. I'm a big believer and having a box and filling yeah. that box. I, I think if the box is open, you're gonna end up in, in a very problematic space. And I, I'm, I'm a really big believer in make yourself a small box and fill every single, um, make it a really dense and tight box mm-hmm. that uh, is completely filled up. That way you don't just have this just, uh, uh, which I feel we fall into sometimes because our content was too niche and we were doing right. that really well, but it, it's too niche to get out there. Yeah. Um, but I would also agree, focus, 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 and yep, I think that would be great. Yeah, um, absolutely. iPod asks, uh, Emma, what Ilvermorny house would you be in? Uh, uh, I have taken the quiz, uh, so I know that I am uh, House Thunderbird. Okay, what's Ilvermorny? I don't Ilvermorny know. Ilvermorny is the American wizarding school. So Hogwarts is the British one. No idea. And Ilver yeah. Morty is new, the American one. <laughs> new info for me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, I am uh, I am House Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah, I know nothing about the Harry Potter. Uh, the only Harry Potter okay. movie I watched and enjoyed was the... Uh, and my brain... My, uh, what brain happens in it? Just blanked on the director. Well, it's the director that also did... Uh, uh, I hate my brain sometimes. Children of Men. Alfonso Cuaron? Yes, Cuaron. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, uh, the third one, Prisoner of yeah. Azkaban. Yeah, oh. that's the one. <laughs> that one. I saw that one. I did actually go see the last two in theaters, but mm-hmm. don't remember a fucking thing about them because I was like, I don't know what's going on. I am, I just, I, just, I missed that boat. Mm-hmm. I was just a little too old, missed that boat. I was still reading a lot of comic books in high school, okay. but I wasn't. I was just a little too old to read the books because I was in college when they kind of came out. Yeah. And I was like, ah, I, I, didn't, I yeah. didn't pick them up. So I am very out of the loop with the Harry Potter stuff. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I have no idea. I, my brain is mostly filled with comic books. I understand. Yeah. Mostly comics. I, I sometimes feel that way, like, especially um, when, we're, when I'm like doing uh, Schmodown and I'm watching like the really good competitors, like the ones that, like the John Rocas and the Mark Rileys uh, and Dan Merles of the world. And I'm like, but like they wouldn't be able to answer any questions about Sailor Moon. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. Have to, like, make myself you can't, feel better. You can't, like, <laughs> you can't be on top of everything <laughs> because of the content that comes. I mean, I went through phases where mm-hmm. I was watching, I went through an anime phase where I watched 
so much. Now, yeah. I had a very particular kind of anime that I liked. Okay. A very particular kind of anime where I was like, oh, if that fits into my like mm -hmm. type of genre, like I'm going to fucking watch it. And I'm right. going to watch every episode. Sure, sure. It's going to go in there. I have always been a little bit of an insomniac. Okay. Um, so yeah, I get that. I would just watch stuff and just keep watching and watching and watching. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got out of that phase because TV started getting so good. Mm -hmm. And I was using that as my like TV. Yeah, phase. absolutely. Um, yeah, I get that. And then TV started getting so, so good and so much of it. Like Malika's never watched Breaking Bad mm -hmm. and we just started Breaking Bad again. And I'm just immediately, it's now... If I'm watch if I watch it all the way through with her again, it will be my fifth time watching all the way through the series oh, wow. since it came out. That's awesome. Oh, that's like that became my shit right there. Uh, but comic books are just so hard to keep up with. Like since we started doing this Valiant show, yeah. I can I'm keeping up primarily with Valiant. There was a time where I read every single thing that Marvel put out Jeez. every week for probably eight years straight mm -hmm. and it actually just ended in about november oh, or wow. october november or something like that november Ooh, that, that is, is when i very, stopped that's dedication toward then. the new civil war that came out i was like you know what i just can't yeah you're like, i, I gotta, can't anymore I gotta i'm back. fucking dialing back because i'm just not feeling marvel mm -hmm. right now and i'm gonna stick to valiant and image mm -hmm. and keep up with those i can't do the marvel thing anymore i just uh, yeah. And you know, one day maybe they'll turn it around again and I'll hop back on. But yeah, like, definitely. for now, I'm uh, backing up. Yeah. Backing up. Yep. Yeah. And now, how much manga do you think you read a week? Not a lot anymore. I, I went through a phase as, you know, a teenager where I, I read any manga I could get my hands on. Uh, yeah, as an adult, I, especially now, it's like I'm just literally, if I am not, uh, like doing a show or at my day job at Universal, I'm sleeping, honestly. <laughs> you know, I, I watch a lot of anime um, still. Uh, just, I, I think for me, it's like, though now I'm getting to a point where I'm talking about uh, anime for some of my jobs. Um, I, I think that's why I've, I've gotten this like very, intense interest in k-dramas as of late because it's like i can just watch this and enjoy it and like i don't have to talk about it but then also there's this little part of me that's like oh i want to talk about this on the internet um yeah i don't know what it is i i just feel like lately i um i'm more into like the physical experience of like watching something um but then every time I like sit down and like read something. So like, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to sit down and read, um, some, uh, uh, sweetness and lightning, uh, which is a, a manga series that came out a couple years ago. There's an anime adaptation of it as well. And then like when I was sitting and reading it, I was like, Oh, this is, it's like, so it's so fun to like, just sit and read. Um, I remember the same thing when I was reading princess jellyfish for a while. Um, and even like going back, like looking through manga that I had read when I was younger to like try to recommend some stuff to, you know, people first dipping their toes into manga. I was like mm -hmm. rereading Magic Knight Ray Earth and I was like, this is freaking great. But like for some reason, and I'm, I've kind of always been this way though, like, and it's with, with books, the same thing where it's like, I step away from it for a while and then it's like, as soon as I have a little time and I actually sit down and do it, I'm like, oh, this is really great. Like I should, I should make more time for this. Yeah. I... I just started doing audiobooks because I don't have mm. enough time, and I've really been enjoying that, uh, especially when flying. Mm -hmm. Like it's been it's been really great. Yeah, um, yeah flying is when I tend to read. <laughs> uh, oh, there were a couple questions that came oh. in here. Um, Emma, as you love giant robots, mm -hmm. have you seen any of Death from Above, and would you be an op for if you ever made your way up to Seattle? Well, here's the thing, guys. Her her show is right after. It is right after. Death from I'd Above. Have to be away. So <laughs> she'd have to cancel one show to do the other. I, I know. Yeah. Um, I, I well, and it, this again goes back to I have zero time uh, for anything. Uh, I have not uh, watched Def, Death from Above, but I hear great things about it, and I yeah, hear that there's fun. some pretty bananas storylines that are happening, and I do enjoy Giant Robots. So if for whatever reason the stars ever aligned, yeah, I would totally. Totally do it. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, Savage Punch says, Emma, in your opinion, what anime manga character is most like Zack? 
Oh, most like Zach. Ooh. Well, um, Zach has uh, Saitama on his shirt right now, and I think that there's some similarities there to working really hard and just being <laughs> disillusioned with the world around you. <laughs> I'm so glad you made that comparison. I've been waiting for so long for someone to make that comparison, but I don't really care. <sighs> so if you do enough sit-ups and push-ups, mm -hmm. um, everybody, eventually... Yep. You'll, uh, you'll be able to d destroy everything with one punch and... Uh, one punch! Uh, and then uh, you'll, you'll be searching for joy in your life. <laughs> and not finding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, God. <clears throat> Yeah, clearly mm. I'm working. I'm not working hard enough because I still have my hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, clearly you got to step up your game. Give it time. Mm -hmm. Give it just a little bit yep. longer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the gray <laughs> hair and the beard, and the white hair in my ears is something that Malika will not let me live down. When I met you, you didn't blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, great, thanks, great, thanks. Um, Lord Schaefer Eleven says, Emma, what was your Patronus on the quiz versus what you want it to be? Mm, well, my Patronus on the quiz uh, was a fox, uh, which I was very pleased with. Uh, I was really hoping it was going to be a cow-nosed ray. Uh, if you've ever gone to a uh, like touch tank where you can touch like rays, uh, you've probably seen them before. They're really cute. They're called cow nose rays for a reason because the fronts of their faces look like cow noses. Uh, and they're very sociable and cute. And I like water creatures because I like the ocean. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, Crash B Gaming, what do you like about PNP the most and your character, Kalara Faye? Well, um, what do I like? I mean, the thing I like the most about it is uh, the relationships that I'm developing with like the other members of our crew. Like, I, I don't, I, I feel like Hector and I have this really good, like semi hot and chewy thing going on, but like a little different, but we're sort of the equivalent of that in our crew, which is really fun. Um, what I like about uh, Kalara is that I, it, she's such a mess. She's, she's a disaster. She has no subtlety whatsoever. Uh, but like, she's really charming. So she makes that work for her. Um, I'm really enjoying um, playing a character who's terrible at combat uh, because I like playing uh, creatively in a way wherein I try to not get into combat situations or find mm -hmm. other ways to be helpful in combat. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um... What do you what do you want to see in the future for your character? Well, you start thinking about character and like what that represents. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you what do you want to see for you in the future? What do you hope happens? Well, I, I mean, I think that Kalara is stepping into her role as a leader uh, a little more these past few weeks, especially uh, during the time when we were when I was masquerading uh, as an imperial officer and then having to deal with. Um, the guest star character that John Roca was playing. Like, I, I feel like when we introduced uh, K-11 Virgo, there were a lot of people being like, well, who's in charge here? Um, whereas before, like, everybody was, like, pretty happy to just listen to me. And now I'm like, no, I really need to, like, step up my game and be in charge. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I... Uh, Kalara has a, I, I've written a very elaborate uh, backstory for her. She's got some very interesting things that happened in her past uh, that uh, I left a bunch of stuff uh, open-ended for Bert to decide uh, if and when he should choose to introduce to bring those it out, things, right, to right, bring right. those things out. Um, but they, there could be some very uh, emotionally uh, complicated circumstances that arise at some point. So I, I'm, I really want Kalara's past to come back to haunt her is what I'm saying. Gotcha. Yeah. And then to follow up that, since we're in the Star Wars universe, mm -hmm. um, for no particular reason, which Star Wars <laughs> fighter class ship would you like to pilot? Oh, uh, to pilot? X-Wing, TIE Interceptor, Bomber, ETC, Chum Chum Jim Et cetera. Um, I would like to pilot... Um, yeah, 
you know, I, I don't want to be boring, but I want to go X-Wing, you know, like that was the, that was the first like rebel fighter ship right. that ever made an impression on me as a kid. So. I would I would totally be Tie Fighter, but uh, I'm a little bit dark side. Dan, Dan Casey described those as the Honda Civics of the galaxy uh, during the Star Wars edition of Movie Fights. Wait, wait, the Tie Fighters. The Tie Fighters, yes. The Honda. C- yep, Honda Civic of the galaxy. Dan yep. Casey. I know. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, Hassan uh, had a question in the chat room that I thought mm-hmm. was pretty good. Who would you most like to interview? Ooh. Who would be the person you'd want to sit down with? Hmm. I, uh, I would really, I think it's just, again, like fresh in my mind because all the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy stuff has been so like out there and prominent. I would love to interview Chris Pratt sometime uh, just because like, I, I don't know if you um, follow him on Instagram, but he has, he has like really like inspiring, lovely Instagram posts. And I just like want to, talk to him about like how did you become such a good person you know what i mean i thought i find his relationship very refreshing yes um yeah i think and it's weird and and i think it's just because i'm so involved with twitch you know and i always Mm -hmm. like seeing other uh seeing people who have fame and sharing how normal Mm -hmm. they are and their insecurities as well and sharing what it's like to live with those insecurities sure, at that sure. level is really brave and admirable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, it really interests me. I think that's really neat. Yeah, and 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 that is one of the things. As you say, you bring up you know his relationship with um, his wife Anna Ferris, and I I feel like that's another thing that I find is is really interesting. Is like so much of the stuff he posts is like my wife is awesome, here's my cute kid, you know, like, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, and here I am at a children's hospital making people's lives better, like, but it doesn't come across as fake at all. No, It definitely. comes across as extremely genuine, so I, I think he'd be really interesting to talk to just about, like, life, you know, I feel like he's somebody who has a lot of, like, life interests and isn't just like, well, I'm an actor. Right. You know? Right. I think it helps too that we all saw him first as the dopey as and Andy. lovable <laughs> Andy Dwyer. Parks and Rec, yes. Yeah, and I, 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 you know, I think it's it's interesting mm-hmm. to see where he is now mm-hmm. as a movie star. But the fact that he started there, it he made him like cross a lot of boundaries for people who would want to like Star Lord. That's why I think it's really interesting. Like when you look at how his fan base grew, it's like, you know, that's really smart casting because Mm -hmm. Andy Dwyer, you know, nerds, like Parks and Rec's an interesting show that I think crosses a lot of uh, genre-defying boundaries of who it appeals to. Um, I know very few people that dislike Parks. Like most of the people I know who don't like Parks and Rec is just because they have not seen it. Like or I, they I, stopped at the first season. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a little different the first mm-hmm. season. Definitely. For sure. Um, well, we didn't really get a chance to dive anything heavy. I know. Because the audience kind of drives these things I know. now. Well, and, and they all just, wanted to just know about anime. Yeah, they wanted to know about anime um, and fun stuff I've done in my life. Yeah, it went really, really easy on you. I Usually know, we talk about I know. depression and yeah. all those things. Um, <laughs> But I guess you get to just leave here in a good mood. I guess I do. Yeah, if you if you guys uh, wanna uh, hear me uh, get into some deep sad stuff, you can listen to uh, my episode of "Don't Be a Beardo" on the uh, Schmoes. Don't Note. be a beardo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Beardo is uh, one of it's a nickname for one of the engineers that works on uh, Schmoes No. And uh, yes, I did his podcast, and we we got into some stuff. So yeah, over on cool. the uh, Schmoes No Plus. You don't have to pay any money for it or anything. That's just the name of the channel to be like, it's not specifically the Schmoes content. It's like related to Schmoes. Right. Um, they have a YouTube channel. It's all on iTunes. And cool. yeah, you can uh, you can listen to that over there. I've gotten some really good feedback from it. And then I've gotten a few people that are like, nah, your problems are stupid. Deal with it. Everyone's <laughs> problems are their own, yeah. and it's all relative. Yeah, it's so true. It's, it's all so very true. relative. It's something I try to tell people all the time, because they'll they'll feel bad bringing stuff up. And one of the things I love about this community, we have the hugs room, we have yeah. this chat room that's there for each other. Yeah. All of us have been through some shit. Yeah, Everyone. that's true. And the way you react to that shit's based on your own experiences mm-hmm. and what you've lived through. And 
dealing with those issues is completely up to your experiences that led to that totally. moment. So some people may have gone through some stuff and have come to a resolution in their life mm -hmm. where they can overcome it easily. Yeah. So it's all relative. It's all completely relative. Um, some small things can be very big things for people because they haven't properly learned how to handle them Absolutely. Yet. So, and that doesn't make their suffering any less no. at all. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, yep. I think it's important <laughs> to be there for each other. Um, but on that note, you'll get a chance to get to know Emma a lot more yeah. very soon because we're hoping to bring Emma in to do afternoon streaming for us. Yeah. And somebody in the audience already said, oh my God, I hope Emma plays Persona 5. <laughs> And I think that's what we're starting her on. Yeah, so I, I could be convinced to do that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to start you on Persona 5. And uh, we're currently yeah. looking at probably Tuesdays, yeah. but we're going to wait to the end of this week yes. to make a definitive yep. decision. But and we'll let you guys know very likely very soon. going to be the time. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. So you'll I'm get a excited. lot of time with Emma. Yeah, to we, get can to know Emma better. Talk, we can just talk about our lives and try to date cute anime boys, but the game won't let me date boys. Does it not? No. Persona 5 doesn't let you date you boys? Can't date boys. Sorry. I know. I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I uh. think they've lifted the, the ban. Yes. The, you can the now ban, stream the full game. You can now game. stream. I, I, last I heard, you can now stream up to November. Uh, Wait, they haven't lifted the entire thing? I don't know that the whole thing has been lifted That's yet, really funny because they released an apology. I know. And they were just kind of like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, no, I, again, But they're no. still, ba like, they're still. Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but, uh, yeah. But certainly, so I'll, Alien, I'll be able to make progress. Alienator progress. says they couldn't, they didn't enforce it probably because every major streamer decided to say, fuck the band. Yeah. Which is, I assumed would happen. Like, we're going to listen to that stuff because as a media company, we're not going to risk it. Of course, of course. But, but I yeah. imagine there wouldn't be many solo streamers that we're going to say, Yeah, November 9th. Fuck this. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I had read, so. There you go. Well, there we go. So, guys, thank you so much <laughs> yeah, um, for, for tuning in to Honesty Hour. I really appreciate it. So, uh, thank you so much, guys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, make sure to listen to the rest of these. If you just caught this one, they're up on our SoundCloud. And they are up on YouTube as well. And this is now back. We'll be doing it on Monday nights. I'll let you guys know as soon as I know who my guest is uh, next Monday night. But maybe we'll have Emma back someday. Yeah. And we can get into the really, deep shit. Really, dig into uh, yeah, my past. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't believe it was all sunshine and rainbows. It was not. It, it never is. <laughs> no. Nope. It never is. Nope. <laughs> something had to make you all sunshine and rainbows. That is Usually true. Usually it's a reaction to something. It is. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> deeper, deeper. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so that part is over with. I just want to make sure we recognize all the people who ah, subscribed. Yay! Um, Cable DX48 was 15 month resub. Ooh. Tabletop Owlbear, 15 month resub. Woo! Um, thank you for the follow, Cryptic Button. Uh, Zikor, 14 months. Thank you for that. Pinetri Torx, thank all you right. for the follow. Uh, Kendall one resubscribe for 14 months. Ooh. Lithunoloven, Lithunoloven. <laughs> Seven <laughs> months. There's a lot of letters in that name. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Drake Vinny for that follow. DC 1991 for eight months. Thank you for that. She doesn't love you for nine months. I like that. Old man, no dancing hype. Thank you. Yeah, Aww. cool. Uh, Numpty524 for 14 months. Thank you for that. Onelia for seven months. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Squeaky for seven months. Uh, Thistleweed for seven, and so Katu for five months, um, and Vic the Bitter for 14. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yay. Words are hard. Words are hard, guys. Words are Yeah, they hard. are hard. Especially um, if you've been talking all day. <laughs> so I'll be back streaming tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., uh, playing some Atlas Reactor with you guys. It's a free game, and we're playing with the community. So if you got tomorrow morning open, we can do custom matches of five on five. And it's stupid fun. We had a lot of fun playing this morning. It's a game that I get very frustrated with, so you'll enjoy it. Um, <laughs> me yelling at a game is commonplace here, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be playing at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and then Malika's going to be playing Little Nightmares tomorrow afternoon, which is going to be really exciting. And then we've got our full Talkie Tuesdays after that, All which right. is going to be, um, speaking of anime, if you guys are anime fans, if you don't know, we have a show on Tuesdays 
Uh, that is at 6 p.m. That's Krillinit Super. It's the uh, Dragon Ball Super after show. So if you're keeping up with Dragon Ball Super on uh, Toonami and you watched last week's episode, you can hear them talk about it. And then we've got Ready to Ramble, our wrestling talk show, and Cineverse, our movie talk show. So, yeah. Lots of good. talking. Lots of yeah. Lots of stuff. Hanging thank you guys out with good people. Talking so much. about stuff they like. Thank you, Emma, yeah, thank for you coming for by. Yeah, We're really excited fun. to start having you on the channel yeah, even more. I'm excited to be here more. To get to know the Thumpers. Yes. Uh, it's yeah, going to be a good time. And don't forget, guys, if you're curious, we have a Patreon. We'll link it in the chat room. And if you want to be a part of our Patreon to, uh, you know, um, help support all the crazy things that we do here and keep this ship a moving. So I'm going to make you stand here awkwardly while I go shut down the stream. Okay. Because I'm Perfect. the person here. You're the only so, person here. Yep, yep, so that's, that's how it works. All right. Thank you guys uh, for tuning in and for all of your great questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my many opinions on anime and things that I like. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very grateful to... Uh, be part of this community. Uh, I hope you guys are watching Pencils and Parsecs. Uh, it's really, really fun. It's like the best part of my week. So nine o'clock p.m. Pacific time, all the times. You should check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>